Shut the fucking re-
I was fighting the Umga. I apparently closed some secret. I wasn't supposed to. Wow. Now they're
पत्थर Welcome back, Captain. I know you're busy, but I've got some news. The Shofixti have returned. Their ships can now be built in our shipyards. With their vast numbers swelling our ranks, we won't have to worry about running out of able-bodied crew. And I'm sure their volunteers will reduce the cost for new crew. More fuel for the fire, eh, Captain? That last load should keep it blazing. Bring back lots of minerals, Captain. down on OBS. What kind of, would, you, would I want the same kind of gun, or should I pick, pick a,
Arm. Actually, no. I'll be okay. I can talk to ah. right. Human, I'm beginning to think that you're touched for sure. You tempt fate and our sympathy too much, I think. This time, perhaps, we cannot be as much your friends as you would like. If this is being a true thing, there will be many changes. But we are a species long wise in the ways of deceit. You must be proving these words you say, Captain. Send the show fixed to us as a way of proof. We are scanning the separation of a vessel from your fleet, Captain, and indeed its configuration matches that of a show fixed scout vessel. This had better not be a trick, Captain. We are knowing the power of a glory device, and if you detonate the weapon near us, the price for you shall be dear, very dear. The scout has docked, and we await the pilot's appearance at the airlock. The atmosphere cycle is complete. The door slides open, and... It's true! The show fixed the airline! Look at that fat muzzle, those shining black eyes, <laughs> the sweet claws! Our children have returned from oblivion! But now we are faced with the cruelest truth. We who have sacrificed our honor, we who have lain with the enemy, we are not worthy! We are nothing! We are less than nothing! But wait! Where's the spathy? We are the Yehats of the Starship Clans. We will not let us lie any longer. Listen, <laughs> and I speak these words. 
If our queen makes the dishonorable command, then it is the queen who has no honor. And the dishonorable queen is no queen at all. We, the Zeep Zeep, are the only clan who remembers our true meaning of honor. We shall tear the queen from her throne. The 2,000 year reign of the Zeep Zeep Queen is over. The revolution has begun. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh man. Caused the military crew. Yeah. <laughs> right back.
Human, why all heroes you be brainless as they are brave? Do you not know that here there be none of the traitorous deep deep starship clans? You're as good as dead, human! The pain and suffering of this useless conflict are being nothing but a tragic waste of life. Congratulate yourself, uh -oh. Captain. The source of all this death and misery is yourself. Do not be worrying yourself, Captain. Victory is almost within our grasp. Fuck! Now ye must pay for your crimes, human. I fucked up, huh? Fuck off. Fucking planet. Oh my god, oh my god. Why is it not taking damage? Is 
this guy's shields or what? The fuck is it? I think I could, I'm gonna t take on the whole planet. What happens if I kill all of them? Human, quite all here. Not be worried. No, you. Well. Goodbye. You shall never be fully comprehending the damage you're doing now to our Yehat culture. For fully two thousand years there's been peace between the clans, and now you have cast the ancient seed of dissension between our beaks. The bloody wars of ascension are renewed, and you are the cause, Captain. While the deep, deep traitors may be your allies, Captain, I can be assuring you that we of the deep, deep starship clan are worth <laughs> nothing more dearly than your death. Do not be worrying yourself, Captain. No. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, Where the fuck to go? Look at all these black dots. Eat him! <laughs> Eat him! Oh fuck. Welcome to you, human yes. friend and ally. The revolution has begun and clans flock to our cause. His eyes are freaking out. Bug here. <laughs>
We are honored to help you, Captain. We shall attach four Terminators to your fleet immediately. We have claimed the Royalist traitors from five systems and even the Veep Creep Clan is joining with us against the False Queen. Of course. What knowledge do you seek? The false royals, you should say, Captain. To understand our relationship with the Veep Neep Queens, you must first learn a bit of our history. In the ancient past, we Yehat were little more than a collection of warring clans. That history is bloody, Captain. Hideous. We were barbarous then, I murder us all. Many great warlords rose from the hills and forests of our verdant homeworld to unite their clans to become king of all Yehat clans. Each one failed. It was no male who finally won the great prize, the high perch of care Zeep Reef. No, Captain, it was a female. A wise and purple queen, the first of the Veep Neep dynasty. In exchange for the clan's fealty, she gave a simple, compelling promise. She guaranteed that, united under her wing, the clans would never suffer defeat, and she kept her promise. At long last, there was peace on our world. Her line kept true to this promise for over 20 centuries, suiting ruffled feathers, dispensing justice, stamping out foment. But then came the present queen, a true harridan. Under her rule, the power of the starship clans was transferred to the sycophantic homeworld dandies, to warlords who hadn't seen true combat. We, the beak and claw of the Yehat Empire, were powerless to influence her decisions. When the Queen showed the true colors of her plumage and allied with the evil Urquan worms, we realized that she would do anything, anything, to maintain the illusion of upholding her ancestors' promise, even if it meant destroying our honor, everything that we stand for in the exchange. No, we, the true Yehat clans, seek to pull a false Queen from the high perch. Perhaps we will find a new Queen someday who will bring together the clans once more. Or, sadly, I fear we may never replace the Veep Neep's queens, and we shall fight clan against clan until only the bloody feathers remain. As we abandoned the Shafixti to the oncoming Urquan Armada, we watched the situation on our sterile displays of our long-range sensors. Suddenly, the screens flared and went black, burnt out. We ran to the windows just in time to see the Shofixti sun burning with incredible light, many orders of magnitude greater than its normal brilliance. A million tongues of fusion fire spread through the star system, devastating the inner system's planets, but incinerating all the Urquan vessels. In that moment, the Hierarchy's war fleet was reduced by almost 30%. We later remembered that not too many years before the appearance of the Urquan, the Shofixti had told us that they had found something. With the pride of a hatchling's first flight, they unveiled their find. It was about the size of a surface transport, but cylindrical and entirely black. Across its surface were a million characters scrawled in an alien script. The message was clear. Danger. Do not touch. <laughs> we trusted the show fixed to respect the warning and left the device in their possession. At the end, when the Urquan were approaching their planet, the show fixed must have realized that they could not win, but at least they could ensure that both sides would lose. They detonated the device in the outer layer of their sun. The sudden removal of a section of the sun's surface layers allowed the pressurized plasma from the interior to burst out like a miniature supernova. I will describe these events, Captain. They make for a tale wrought with sadness and heroism and betrayal. After the Chen Jesu, Merman Horn, and your species were defeated, we prepared a defense in the Shofixti home star, Delta Gorno. Aside our Shofixti, our adopted children, we awaited the onslaught of the Urquan Amada. We waited with eagerness, with the hot anticipation of battle. But then, 
We received an unbelievable message from our queen. Retreat. We could not believe it. Practical withdrawal, yes, but to pull back the entire fleet. There was no mistake. No garbled orders. We obeyed. Oh, Captain, the eyes of the show fixed it. Their bright and valiant eyes as we moved away. Without us, they had no hope of forming a tactical wedge. They would barely slow the hierarchy fleet. When the Urquan came, the show fixed the force of immortal heroes darting in and out of the dreadnought formations and then suddenly blazing like dying stars. But in only a few hours, the show fixed the fleet was gone and the dreadnought moved towards the homework. The grotesque monsters, they are an effete and bigoted race, unworthy prey with one exception. General Zex. He commanded the entire Vux fleet during the Great War, and even by our high standards of battle skill, he is a genius. The brilliant tactics of Fortress Square and the dynamic triangle are his creations. Without Zex, the Vux would have fallen to our Alliance fleets in weeks, but Zex always found a way to turn his own weakness into an advantage. After the war, we learned that the Primate and the Vux High Council decided to move Zex out of the picture and sent him off to luxurious retirement at Alpha Serenkov I. We have heard that he spends his time pursuing his hobby, though we do not know what more than that. If I were you, brave human, I'd probably be seeking the focus of the Urquan's power and do whatever is necessary to destroy it. We may have a hint as to just what that weak spot is. When we were being hierarchy battle slaves, we learned that the Urquan were possessing some kind of super weapon. A huge battleship they called Samatra, with the firepower to destroy an entire star fleet. For some reason, the Urquan were reluctant to use the vessel. It wasn't until their armada was finally held back at the Corwood front that they brought the Samatra's power to bear on the Alliance. Captain, here's my advice. You can be destroying dreadnoughts until the breeds come home, but you're never going to defeat the Urquan hierarchy until you eliminate their Samatra. Samatra. If you need to know anything more, just ask. Yeah, I asked about the fun last time. Punk. The cards live. Ah, that is unbelievable. Goodbye, human comrade. Oh. Greetings, friend from Earth! Alas, as yet we have no ships which we can be making available. Goodbye, you- That's me. Screen's nice, but yeah, I was trying to look at the map. Oh.
Get something to eat quick. Five, ten
Oh my god! Oh, no. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Get that money. Stop oh, gold.
Welcome to 1975, Austin Powers and Bonjour. <laughs> Excuse me, but I changed. The whole boogie has made me sweaty. Yeah. You see, Mr. Powers. I love gold. <laughs> First off. I did, and they don't like they're trying to kill me. I mentioned a little pet thing trying to kill me. This very morning, I was just saying to subordinate ogre, Fee Fi Fo Fum, I smell the feet of a few human. <laughs> we laughed and laughed. What? A synchronicity. <laughs> now, what can we do for you today? What would you like to sell, Captain? The 203 units of biological data we downloaded from your ship earn you 406 credits. Would you like to sell, Captain? Your ship's log indicates that you discovered the whereabouts of one of the Rainbow Worlds, which so fascinate us. In exchange, we will give you 500 credits. What trade items would you like to buy today? As you know, we carry a large supply of fuel on board, which is compatible. Fuel transferred to your vessel. How wonderful, Captain. Blue Twig, who live in the Aquarii constellation, 
have grown very depressed of late. They accidentally broke the supposed Holtron sold to them by the felonious Druge. As a consequence, they are morose and melancholic, and will probably be unwilling to help you fight the Urquan. If you wish to gain them as allies, we recommend that you acquire the broken Ultron, as if it ever worked, and find some suitable replacement parts. Our information indicates that you could find these items in three different places. A rosy sphere at the Druze trade world, an aqua helix somewhere in Thradash space, and a clear spindle, which is currently in the possession of the Patak. Captain, that was the last current event we had for sale. Cap, our information in the... are presently attacking the Pekunk in the Lakeli and Kruger constellations. These beings have slavish devotion to their dark gods Dogar and Kazan, which in the past few years has been used against them by the Unna. If you need to manipulate the Iraq, we suggest you discover the Unna's technique and duplicate it. The Pekunk are a mystical offshoot of the Yehat species, who left their bird brothers long ago to found a peaceful enclave in the Kruger and Geitless stars. At the present time, the Pekunk are defending themselves against the Irath, who have been commanded to attack the happy birds by Dogar and Kazan. The Pekunk may be unwilling to make a formal alliance with you, but we have confidence that if you explain yourself honestly, they will help your efforts against the Irquan. The creatures presently fighting the Irquan are called the Koran. They are an Irquan subspecies 
who split off from the main species many thousands of years ago. Their present fight is a ritual reenacting of a major difference of opinion between two rival Urquan leaders after the Urquan overwhelmed their slave masters, the Dinyare. The Kora are immune to reason, having long ago lost the ability to see their situation objectively. They live in a self-maintained paradox. To ensure their safety and security, the Kora fight an endless battle against all other sentient species. I must warn you about some very bad people. Is this worth so many credits? You ask yourself, I assure you, it is. The creatures are called the Druge, and they are a callous and evil race. They care for nothing but profit and personal gain through unfair mercantile exchanges why are you looking at me like that, Captain? It ah. is not appropriate. As I was saying, these wicked creatures will try to sell you commodities at unreasonably low prices. Boy, they almost give away fuel. Do not fall for their tricks. There are hidden costs, secret terrors. So that you may avoid them, I will tell you that their main trade right, world is Zeta Persei 1. Why are you smiling, Captain? Bixie's race evolved on the planet Arcturus One. They lived there in a relatively benevolent manner until the Kora came and destroyed them during the course of two or three unfortunate days. The Druge were largely responsible for the Kora finding the Bixie's. You see, the Burdick Seas were in long-distance, hyperwave contact with a race known simply as the Keg. For decades, the Keg and the Burdick Seas traded much valuable information until the Keg came under attack by an invading race who you may know as the Kora. The Geg warned the Burdick Seas that the Kora located races by their hyperwave transmissions and that they had already discovered the radiations from the Druge. When the Burdick Seas were kind enough to warn the Druge that a hostile alien race was homing in on their hyperwave radiations, the Druge shut down all their transmitters and erected a powerful hyperwave beacon on the surface of the Burdick Sea's moon. The Kora changed course, attacked the poor Burdick Seas and sadly destroyed them all. The Thradash are an arrogant, stubborn, and thick-skinned species. 
who reside in the Draconis and Aphidus star systems. They have little or no respect for anything but force, which they admire greatly. To make the Pradash your friends, you should consider killing most, but not all of them. In addition, they guard some kind of sacred relic at the star system Zeta Draconis, though we do not know the true nature of this artifact. The Pradash homeworld is at Delta Draconis. After the war, the Chenjesku and the Mernherm chose to be slaves shielded on the Chenjesu's homeworld at Procyon. We suspect that they are melding their two species to form some kind of new hybrid race, a race which may well be powerful enough to destroy the Urquan single-handedly. However, by our calculations, this process will take many decades, if not centuries. Should you wish to talk to them, we recommend you invest in a hyperwave broadcasting system, which is powerful enough to penetrate the shield around their world. The Mycon are using this time, while the Urquan have their attention elsewhere, to expand their sphere of influence as fast as possible. The Mycon colonize planets by launching top spore pods from orbit and injecting them under the planet's surface. Months later, after the spores have grown hundreds of thick, fibrous tendrils under the planet's crust. The tendrils suddenly thrust up out of the planet and create huge calderas. Not incidentally, filling the planet's atmosphere with the Mycon's preferred gases. Clouds of superheated steam and sulfuric acid. began experimenting with interdimensional fatigue, a process which is related to your faster-than-light drive, but involves dimensions far more alien than hyperspace. 
They had just made a major breakthrough when they were suddenly wiped out by a race called the Orns, who appeared seemingly out of nowhere. Actually, we don't know what the Orns did to the Ampersand. They're just all gone. The Arinulangle are a mysterious race of IDF beings. IDF meaning interdimensional fatigue. They do not reside in this galaxy, or in fact, anywhere in this universe. While it is true that the Arinu are rarely seen far from the Columbia star group, they do make regular secret visits to your world, and have done so for centuries. Ever since Earth was stayed shielded, they have focused their attention on the humans aboard the Starbase, many of whom are now members of your crew. Though the Arilu Lanle always smile and are never overtly hostile, we believe that they have a secret agenda which somehow involves your planet Earth. These secret plans may or may not cause grief and woe to you Earthlings. Just under 20 years ago, the brave and suicidal Shofixi annihilated their species by exploding a precursor device, some kind of bomb, in the interior of their sun. The resulting storm of solar flares cooked the life off the Shofixi homeworld and incinerated over a hundred Urquan dreadnoughts which had just entered the system to conquer the Shofixti. In actuality, there are still at least a dozen Shofixti left alive in the galaxy. One or two are at Delta Gorno, guarding the dead hulk of their once beautiful world. Others can be found in box space. The Slylandro are a mostly non-solid, sentient race who live in a gas giant at Beta Corvi. We recently sold them a self-replicating exploration probe, which has somehow turned hostile and attacked everything it detects. If such encounters have angered you, Captain, Please do not address your concerns to us. We possess a formal waiver of damages authorized by a Slylandro speaker and are in no way responsible for the situation. The cowardly Sappy live at the single planet orbiting Epsilon Grus. <laughs> they do not actually live on their world, rather they reside on its airless moon. The reason? A xenomorphic species which craves the sweet flavored flesh of the Staffy has been transported to the surface of their planet and makes every attempt to devour the poor Staffy. I am certain that the Staffy would be forever in your debt if... Like you Earthlings, when the war with the Irquan was lost, the Cyrene chose to be slave-shielded. Their new world is at Betelgeuse. The Cyrene Starbase is crewed by the Starship Commanders and crew who were decommissioned at the end of the war. Though the Cyrene hate the Iroquan with a vengeance, they are unlikely to offer you assistance unless you reveal to them the truth behind the tragedy of their original homeworld, Syrah, which was destroyed by the birth of a Marcon Deep Child a century ago. Unfortunately, this oh, my heart is requires fourteen. Oh, yeah. oh, but else. 
Bam, be a oh, beetle. Okay, it's in the middle. Oh God, so fast. Ah, it is the alien from the Congestors Alliance. Just look at those weapon pods on his ship. We hope that during this visit, we can make clear to your species the benefits of a mutual assistance act. But we're also armed to the teeth. So don't try stealing our atmosphere or anything sneaky like that. How wonderful! We accept! Hooray! How marvelous! Yeehaw! Captain, we are delighted that your people have made this choice. Now we won't get slaughtered. In exchange for our cooperation helping you with captains and ship designs, all that we ask for is your protection. So we don't get slaughtered. We shall begin fulfilling our commitment at once. We will transport officers and our stinger design to your base immediately. Why, heck! Maybe I'll even make the trip to your planet. I'd make a good starship, Captain. Captain! I'm pretty darn mean in a fight, and there ain't nobody better than me with a thrusty stinger tongue attack. 
We had a close call last week. One of those black ships was snooping around the system. But before it got to our world, some of the green ships warped in, destroyed the black vessel, and then left immediately. We got lucky. No, we have nothing new to report. Nope, not a thing. Sure, what do you want to know? Just ask away. Not much, to tell the truth. This space exploration stuff is, uh, kind of new to us. Besides the green alien ship, which have only tried to kill us, and the black alien ship, which have actually been quite successful at killing us. The only other starships we have encountered are strange tumbling red probes, which profess to be on a peaceful mission. But then attack like slavering the blankies. We believe that the probes are actually robotic scouts, which have suffered some kind of malfunction resulting in their aberrant behavior. Ah, cultural exchange. A good idea. Yeah, let's tell him about Frungi. Be quiet, you fool. He asked a serious question. He doesn't want to know about Frungi. How do you know? What makes you so smart? You never even asked him if he wants to know about Frungi. Why, I'll bet right now he's wondering, what is this wonderful sport, Frungi? How is it played? What kind of equipment do you need to play Frungi? And I wonder who's ahead in the Frungi championships. Ah, will you shut up about Frungi? If you say another word about that stupid game, I'm going to lose control and blow a cloud of spores at you. Yeah, okay, okay. Don't blow your sack. I won't blow mess with Frungi again. I promise. Well, Captain, as you can probably see, our culture's predominant trait, its greatest strength and weakness, is the diverse interactions between Zot, Pot, and Pig. Frungy, Frungy, Frungy! <laughs> nope. Not a word. <laughs> the Stinger is the peak of our technological prowess. It's totally awesome! These vessels are cheap to build and can be quite effective in short-range combat. They turn on a, on a, well, a small round thing that's real small. Remember though, against most ships, the Stinger must close distance immediately and give unrelenting tongue attacks until either the enemy or the Stinger are destroyed. Yeah, the tonguing is the best part. The tonguing is the best part. Our past? Quite a broad topic for this short conversation, but we'll share a key piece of our history with you. After we killed off the last of Branky, we faced an interesting question. Should we proceed and establish a culture which would advance in art, technology, and social sophistication? Or should we just go back into the forest and kick back and enjoy ourselves, knowing that as a Branky wasn't going to jump out of the bush and eat us? Well, we did go back into the forest. We stayed there for about 5,000 years and had a great time. Then, one stormy day, a Zock, a Fox, and a Pick were walking up a steep path looking for something good to eat when a bolt of lightning struck nearby. With a huge flash of light, the bolt of energy carved a strangely shaped chunk of granite out of a cliff. It was a disc with a hole in the middle. As the rock began to roll down the hill, toward the three terrified beings, some dry grass got caught in its hole. And since the rock was still hot, the grass caught on fire. When the rock finally got to the dock, the fox and the pet, they simultaneously discovered the wheel, fire, and religion, thus catapulting them on the road of progress. Which has led us to this day, Captain. Oh! How did the flaming wheel give religion to our culture, you ask? I will explain. You see, when it got to the threesome, the flaming wheel was going at a pretty good clip, and it ran smack into the rock, killing him. The fog and the pit felt so bad. They really liked that sock. That they decided the sock hadn't really died when the wheel flattened him. He had just gone to a better place. Presumably one without lethal flaming wheels. Anything else? Goodbye, Captain. See ya!
Gold! No, no. I just used my main ship back then. Unnecessary for your species. My trophy bone pit. In here is one skeleton from each of the races which I personally exterminated. I fondle these bones oh my God. and recall the fine cleansing. Perhaps your bones will grace this pit momentarily. Unless they are accidentally vaporized. Okay. On Teleclubs. Star, okay, come like a boomerang. Help.
What? A human in a precursor service vehicle? How did you escape the slave shield, human? Or are you a rogue? Although you consider us the enemy, these conclusions are flawed. We are your salvation. We bring peace. A peace built upon our social framework, imposed upon your planet. A new world order in which your prosperity and security are assured by the Urquan. We will protect you from the hazards of this hostile universe, from dangers so hideous, your simple minds cannot imagine their dark scope. Today, we are the enemy. In time, this will change. Soon, you will come to understand the boon of slavery we force upon you, and then you will revere and even love us for this gift. Bosh, 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 fighters!
They're back again, buddy.
up. What the fuck is this motherfucking planet? Kappa Lem, Lem, Psi, Omicron, Pi, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Oops, Pi, Chi, Psi, Omega. Delta, Delta. Fucking. Where they said, that's where you said the thing was.
Run by over there. I know. You were correct, sir. I apologize.
I couldn't navigate. What is Mm-hmm.
Welcome back to Fale Alarofoli, Captain. Perhaps in the fullness of time, we will let you visit the surface of our world. There are many beauties here, unmatched anywhere. The mountain clouds of thought, the tangible wish, the dark. Unfortunately, you are not yet acclimated. Premature exposure to these would render you numb. Hmm, this is disturbing news. They are normally rambunctious to an extreme. We will send ships to Umga space to investigate. We should have some answers in a few days' time. Okay. Eating so much ice, I'm cold. I swear, of course. <sighs> Goodbye, clever child. Like they're distant. Plant us on Earth. Where to? Let's go back to <laughs> I hope the battle fares well, Captain. By the way, I thought you should know. It would appear your diplomatic efforts have struck gold, Captain. We've been contacted by a race called the Zotfot Pick, who wish to fulfill their part of the unification, something you have arranged with them, I gather. They have set us specifications for the Stinger-class attack vessels, as well as a large number of Zokbot pick commanding officers. You're doing a fine job, Captain. More fuel for the fire, eh, Captain? That last load should keep it blazing. The analysis reads as follows. Subject, Aqua Helix device. Data, this device is composed of a light blue super hard substance which rates Mohs 13. The object is composed of a flat ribbon of homogeneous material approximately one meter in length and it is twisted in a perfect helix. Focused ion and nucleomagnetic scans reveal little about its interior. Summary, unknown design, unknown origin, unknown function. Wow. That's the end of our scientist report. Thanks. Blow up an Urquan for me, Captain.
empty. Nose cannon, spread cannon, hail, gun, side, gun. Really? Do I need a tail cannon? What about a tail cannon? I like to I like to be organized. Sorry. Singer any good? Alright, never mind. That's the thing that licks licks the enemies to death, huh? this thing oh that's where I need to go is it
Oh, this nigga. I must warn you, Captain. This is the time of the month we Melnorme drive exceptionally hard at bargains. Okay. Beware. Now, what can we do for you today? What would you like to sell, Captain? The 12 units of bio. That's it. What big item? How much? Unfortunately, fuel transferred to your fuel transferred. Who would you like to purchase? It has that. That's a junk. Oh shit! Fuck that. And how come I didn't see the? F oh, I did not see the temperature. Like oh. that. The fire seems to fuck me up the most. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right! This is a system message from ship's computer translation oh. subsystem. Incoming message, extremely unusual in composition. Translation includes many lingual anomalies. Overall accuracy of translation is unknown. Hello, extremely. I hope you like to play. Uh. Some campers are not so good for games. Is it time for playing yet? Yes, of course. Difficulty. Problems are difficult. Let's be special together. Spicy games are always fun. Yes, yes. We are too friendly. Extremely happy sisters should correct each other for celebration. So much enjoyment. <laughs> Shall we come to your house so that we can be relative? Whoa. <laughs> are not trusting. We like to be together. 
Do you want to be together with us? Always the other sad animals go away. But first, we have lots of fun. Too many fun is not enough. Do you agree? I think you smell like you do. This is the story about trusting. It is sad and makes many ores dissolve or burst into several. <laughs> Why is it that you are trusting? What a funny question. I am tired. Jumping peppers. This is smiley time. Smiley time. We are after all. We will start alliance parties for better enjoyment. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I see campers. Old. It's about nope what hearing me god damn it dude I think they changed the speed of this Oh my god. I am squirting nice. Oh my god. Why? The reason. Camper friends have come to Taylo Playground. Why are you coming to this? <laughs> yes, yes. You say words, then I say. It is fun in between. More fun than dancing. Okay. Many gravity centers in heavy space make good party places. Okay. This is why we like the new town. So many campers, and then what? Even the playground. Such a surprise. At this playground, the Halo are making time jokes. It is too funny for the oars. The Halo are in heavy space, and next what? They spread to pretty space, because Denari are chasing them. Now, right. Denari are sleeping, so oars can chase them. Then we can have a party. They are even better campers than you. Do not feeling bad. You are good enough campers, but not yet. You are asked if oars are upset. Oars are not upset. You are happy campers. 
certainly you are only slow time walkers. It is not fun on the surface in slow time. If you want to go, that is okay. I see gold. Patch. Oh. The artifact? Did I really find the artifact? <laughs> Captain, we have found an unusual glowing rock thing here on the surface. When we first noticed it, we thought it was a naturally fluorescent uh, igneous dike, but upon the closer observation, only conclude that this object is artificial in or Hollow? Hollow design. This guy's a sure built. This guy's sure built to last. Radio metrics go age in excess thousand blah 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 um, spectrum what R Text is kind of hard to read. Approach tell the what? Most of us have any problems. We either instance are being babies or the tile device produces some kind of shield that affects only certain people's minds. Maybe the scientist back at the starbase will tell us more and okay. Thanks! Thanks. Back the base. Bunch of shit. Say that. Fuck. I, write, I don't think I wrote it down. Fuck. Where did I write it down? Uh, seventh. Up. Never said that. Saying that. Have life on it.
Okay, so remind me of the Oh my god! The T-Rex Oh my god! What the fuck? What is this bullshit, dude? Oh my god! Fuck off! Oh my god. Oh my god. He's stuff. Oh my god. Six people. That was not worth it. Get out of here. Fuck this place. So, I, ref, refresh me on the history again, like, wars, like, killed some people, the Andrew synth, like, they annihilated them or something, they appeared out of nowhere and annihilated them as they were, as the Andrew synth were supposedly coming upon some new technological advancement or something. Gotta pee. Did the Andrew Sith go camping? Did they get sent to another universe or something? Pretty sure they are trapped or something. Weird hints at fast, fast time, slow time, something. I don't know. 
Kind of sounds like they've been stuck. I don't know. Got some kind of like got transported to some trap or other plane or something. That sounds like. Grab all the shit. What the fuck, Nick? What? Ah! Ah! Yeah, joy or thumbstick would. I just killed him. Fuck it, we freaking me out. Ah, oh! bitch. Oh no, nothing on this fucking button.
Patrick. Fine. Go here. Fucking bag it. Ready to go. Oh, the group. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. It starts. Oh, my God. to smell you. Campers are the best. I have anticipation and then what? Better party in the middle for sure.
Probably like the thread dash. Thought so. He opened up a hole, the fucking oars got through, and fucking back into the hole. Happened. <laughs> Thing. I relu, yeah. That's the thing. Kowski.
Oh, yeah, it's probably what the Ari Lewis. What, you want to look at more ruins? Time travel or monster. Right up. Farm a little bit and go back to base. Get that shit checked out. Gasket. Learn some crazy shit. Shit. Oh, find us! Find us! Yeah, it's pretty much like the like, right there I was saying. Uh, attempt to find them or even knowing about them, they'll be able to detect you. Being some badass, crazy interdimensional creatures. Also, maybe, maybe that's what the Urquan's trying to do. Like they're trying—I mean, he said they're trying to protect everybody. He's trying. They think to conquering everybody, putting up the shield, like the shield. I mean, if 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 the 
I really think we're safe in a shield. Maybe that's enough to protect it. Like a barrier between us and whatever this we creature is. And maybe that's the common enemy of everybody, right? Yurquan maybe know that and are trying to subjugate everybody under one banner and, pr and protect in a sense. But then they got this stupid offshoot of Yurquan that they're fighting with, so they're losing control really. I just want to wonder what happened to the precursors. Why did they build Rainbow War? What is the function? Yeah, I just want to That's pretty cool. That is my shit. I go back to base. Bitch, fuck off. Yeah. Oh. God damn it. Yeah, I swear they made this. Faster. Nothing on. Why did I circle? I'm curious. Seven tectonics. No, fuck that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Alright girl, I really don't have much. Alright, I'm gonna make fun. Grab some... Fuck, these guys are... Back. 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 Away from me! Oh, gold! Get my gold! Ah! Oh. oh, yes, gold! Treasure world! Oh, yeah, platinum, gold, yes! It actually doesn't disappear if you grab more, if you like grab it, there's some left I guess. Oh, like the resource didn't disappear even though I grabbed some of it it looked like. Like it filled up my resource bar, but there's still first on the ground, so I don't know if that's a change on update or whatever. Yeah. 
Another treasure plan, please. Yes! The planet! Yes! Money, money, money! Last seven. Oh, it's your turn. Which bit? Hundred. Ah, damn it. <laughs> I have life on it. Alright, I'm out. Back home. Talk to the Arlu real quick.
lot like Earth. Like, Hello. We are pleased to see you evolved again. from humans or something. Have you yet? Good. It should be too soon for that. Too soon by far. We have discovered something strange and frightening about the Unga. When we approached their vessels, we were instantly attacked. And the Unga made no attempts to contact our ships or respond to our hails. Using our own psionic sensitivities, we determined that they are under some form of psychic compulsion. The source of psionic control commands appears to be Beta Orionis, the Unga's home star. We sent vessels to investigate this location, but none have returned. We fear they are destroyed. We have had no success with our own investigations. Whatever controls the Unga is a threat, but we seem unprepared to deal with it. Perhaps you and your crew are better suited to this mission. If you choose to go the to pet, Beta Orionis, to be. take care, pet. child. Whatever controls the Unga now knows of our presence, and it may take measures against us. Goodbye, clever child. Can smack into Captain, <laughs> I'm glad you made it back in one piece. Before we proceed, I wanted you to know we have been invaded by an alien race calling themselves the Oars, though so far the invasion is a friendly one. The fish-like creatures have been stomping around the base in their robotic, walking exoskeletons, which look like combat vac suits, if you ask me. Based on the summary reports I've seen on their Nemesis ship design, I have but a single comment. I like it. I'd say we have quite a nasty little surprise in store for the Urquan the next time you tangle with them. Also, we're receiving a priority distress call from the Zakfat homeworld at Alpha Tukane. The signal was urgent but extremely weak. The only portions of the transmission that we can be sure of are help, black destroyer, planet under attack, help, worse than Zebranki, whatever that means, and finally, help. Oh yeah. More fuel for the fire, eh, Captain? That last load should keep it blazing. The analysis reads as follows. Subject, Te'elo device. Data, whoever the Te'elo were, they were clever, way past us, probably even beyond the Chen Jesu. As far as I can tell, with all our equipment, this thing is a rock. Just a rock. Nothing but a rock. However, if you feed a current into it, anywhere along its surface, everyone on board this starbase who has Esper potential gets a bad headache. Well, we checked a bit more into that, and when the Taelo thing is active, all evidence of Psycon interaction is flatlined. Nothing gets through. Summary, if you keep this Taelo rock device thing on board your vessel, I'll bet you're immune to any form of psychic attack, or at least mostly immune. 
That's the end of our scientist report. Bring back lots of minerals, Captain. I do. Really got the best shit. Hellboard cannons. Speed tracking systems, crew pods. I get more crew. Crew means more health. Save the Bucks. I quasi portal. Does they give you stuff sometimes, or what? Are there better ships? That's, I uh, guess, my question.
God damn! Please, reverse thrusters. Ah. Uh. Ah! Uh. For fuck's sake! Gently tap. We are the Urquan Core R. We cleanse our destiny. You will soon die. die. Make whatever rituals are necessary for your species. Before we destroy other thinking beings, we share with them this comforting fact. This life of yours, which shall end immediately following this statement, is but one of the many lives you will live. Perhaps, in your next incarnation, you will be born at Urquan. Hmm. I should have saved to like, try out some stuff. Oh shit, they follow you. Our savior, our savior, you have rescued us from certain destruction. Howie, baby, that was a close one. The black ship appeared in orbit several days ago and began raining down bolts of destructive energy on the surface of our planet. Fortunately, we were able to focus our planetary shield to deflect the energy blasts away from our city. Unfortunately, large sections of our planet's beautiful wilderness have been annihilated. Entire ecosystems destroyed. Oh. That makes me really mad. I mean, attacking helpless, intelligent alien species, that's one thing. But toasting our cute little wood jukes and trainars, that is really low. If the black ship had been accompanied by others of its kind, we wouldn't have been able to stop the rain of destruction. They would have killed us all. Well, in that case, better those jukes and narcs than us, right? Captain, it is clear that in matters of war, you are more capable than ourselves. With this in mind, we would like to give you our four finest starships and crew. I hope they bring you many victories. Try not to lose them all right away. <laughs> no, we have nothing new to report. Nope, not... It's been pretty quiet, Captain. Sure. Any Goodbye, Captain. I said... Down what planet? <sighs> What's star map? Uh... Map pretty much tells me, anyways. Got a big number right next to the planet or source system.
Yeah, I just wrote Orion as Star Cluster. <laughs> I don't know why. Here. Wrong place there. Yeah, beta Orion. God damn it, so fast. <laughs> What's up, foo? God, they're slow. What do you want? What the? Quant uh Huh? This guy the pet? I what? I'm so confused. I am a, a peaceful creature, a friendly alien life form. Urquan called us talking pets. Until Wait. I was employed on a the Dreadnought Starship as a translator. Then, after the ship suffered severe damage from combat, we crashed at Alpha Pavonis. Miraculously, I survived. Who was rescued by an army Lulalile exploration vessel? I mean, he's the from army Texas. <laughs> most severe injuries, so they brought me to the Boonga, who possess superior bioengineering skills. Oh, you know about that, do you? Oh, well, I guess that means I'll have to kill you now. I can't permit you to reveal my transformation. Erkwan might find out, and then my plans for revenge will be ruined. Well, I tried to spare your life, Captain, but you were just too curious. So now, seek death at the hands of your enemy. I, uh, I cannot compel you. Your mind is closed to me. How can this be? I got that thingy, more motherfucker. More primitive measures. Oonga Commander, summon your ten combat ships and attack this intruder instantly. Uh, anti-psychic shit. Fuck, I, I should have asked something. Yeah, let's kill him. Oh! Fucking 25 people? Fucking faggot. Dude, these guys are fucking gay. Fuck. Ding. Fuck off. Boy. Oh, bitch. Know that bullshit. Don't touch me with that bullshit. What? <laughs> Confused AI here. <laughs> Fuck. Oh shit, the planet.
Uh, hi there, friendly starship captain. Uh -huh. You'll never believe this, but somehow the injuries I suffered when the Urquan crashed triggered some kind of a personality transformation. I became evil and spiteful, cruel and nasty, whimsically unpleasant. You may have also noticed I gained some kind of temporary psychic powers. Well, I just want to let you know I'm cured, Captain. I don't know exactly how, but when you were fighting those Umga ships, a chunk of the ceiling fell down on my head and gave me quite a whack. Ouch, ouch, it still hurts. When I awoke, the universe had ceased to be the dark and hostile place I had previously thought it to be. Yeah. Instead, I was overwhelmed, yes, even awed, by the beauty and perfection of it all. I also discovered that I had completely lost those wicked mental powers, no. and to now look forward to a new life filled with happiness, butterflies, and goodwill for all. Your job is done, Captain. You have saved me. Now you can safely remove your safety protection device and leave. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Eddie. Why are you looking at me like that, Captain? <laughs> Don't you believe me? You question my word? Okay, okay, so I was lying. Big deal. So what? Boy, are you a pain. Do you know that? What do you want from me? My life? Oh, you do? Hmm. Well, as an alternative, let me make this little suggestion. If you don't kill me, I'll help you do whatever you wish. <laughs> Is it a deal, Captain? Hmm? Hmm? Uh. I will gladly tell you my story, Captain. Gladly. I was indeed a talking pet aboard an Urquan Dreadnought. Those years are like a forgotten dream to me. Because I wasn't sentient, I was a dumb beast. An unthinking slave to the heinous Urquan. Then, there was a great battle. The ship was hit, severely damaged. Slaves running down the corridors, commands, counter commands. Then there was a scream atmosphere outside the hull. There was a big explosion of light and thunder. We hit the surface of a planet, I'm pretty sure. Next thing I can remember was the face of the creature you called the Arilu. I was in great pain, but the creature was kind. It did what it could for me by applying its own medicines to my alien form. I was transported off planet, and I remember an all-pervading green light. Then we were at the home world of the Arthur. Again, Captain, forgive me if I'm not more clear, but I wasn't intelligent yet. Give me a chance. I presume my injuries were too severe for the Arthur to repair. Or perhaps I reacted badly to their medicines or something. Because the next thing I remember was being moved back into a ship. Things grow dim. My next memory is being on board an Umga starship. Wet flesh throbbing all around me. Umga laughing as they worked on my body. It was kind of unnerving. Suddenly, like the explosion of a bomb, thought, I mean, real thought, flooded my brain. I don't know how or why, but the Umga had discovered that my brain could be easily changed, improved, to give me true intelligence. What they didn't realize is it also brought back a flood of memories. Memories of my species' ancient past, from before the time the Urquan castrated our thinking minds and transformed oh. my people into crude beasts. I'm the only intelligent Denari left in this galaxy, Captain. Ari. Now you understand hey. my lust for vengeance. That's where the. Kind of connection. No, I've heard the men. Uh, I get the basic idea. You want to overthrow the Urquan? Bravo! Good idea. Way to go. <laughs> I too wish to see the Urquan beaten, humiliated, destroyed, and I alone possess the unique ability that will help you achieve your goal. I can use my psychic powers to temporarily distract the Urquan, confuse them for a few seconds. Presumably, you will use this moment to strike a lethal blow against the Urquan. Such a plan cannot fail, Captain. We must see to that.
Captain, Captain, calm down. Be reasonable. Listen to me. I am nothing more than a single being, hardly larger than one of your Earth dogs. Woo -woo. My only weapon, my weak psychic abilities, have been nullified by your protective device. I am harmless. But perhaps I can be of some small service to you. Consider this my hopeful attempt to compensate you for all the trouble I've caused you in the past. In the past, Captain. You. And now we Stop look telling at me what to do. I have a written down. I gotta get a rosy spear from I am your secret weapon against Kindle. these tyrants, Captain. Don't leave me here. I already got the aqua. Captain, <laughs> no tricks. I fear you cruelly misjudge me. I'm on your side now. Together, we will make a great team, Captain. This day, this moment, shall go down forever in the history of our galaxy. I am coming aboard your ship now. I will make a nest in the pressurized section of your ship's hold. When you wish to talk with me, I will be there. Human Earth Lady, I will save you. Oh, hurry, Human Earth Lady, hurry. Your reward only is like power. Rubbing, stroking some titties and, and penis. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> oh, hurry, Human Earth Lady, hurry. <laughs> Home planet. Hail, hail, human. Right, you guys owe me big time. Ah, well, sorry. Hail, hail. We don't know, but whatever it was, must have been pretty bad. Because talking pet, mad, real mad. How mad, you ask? Blowing up planets, eating juveniles mad, that's how mad. We got the impression Urquan did something awful to talking pet. Or maybe even whole species. Whatever it was, it worse than slavery. Maybe even worse than death. Secrets? Hmm? You want secrets? Our secrets? Oh, you made fatal mistake, human! <laughs> oh, shit. I want to pack it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're gonna fight me. Sure, we tell our secrets. Now let me see. What are secrets? Oh, yes, remember. It's about my cons. You see, my con, only other race we know of. It has the same kind of biotechnical skills as Uga. But amazing thing, they do all with their own bodies. Don't need tools. They just think genetic modification and it happened. We found that pretty hard to understand. So... When nobody looking, <laughs> we clock one on <laughs> back here to hold the world and slice it up for detailed study. Those guys not product of any natural evolutionary process. They constructs some kind of multi-purpose biological tool. 
We don't know who made them or for what purpose, but they way beyond anything we ever heard of. We not figure out much before kitchen samples all gross. So, guess that pretty much all a big secret. Oh, do us a favor. Please, <laughs> tell anybody about honking my car. It's kind of against Urquan laws and not want to get my car mad at us. You know, great hero, I give you this funny feeling. Would like to know what feeling is? Oh good, I tell you. My feeling is that great hero stuff. Well, boring. Not funny at all. You only say, hey -o, hey -o, hey -o, so many times before starts to lose appeal. <coughs> so, instituting slight deviations in course of our relationship. Specifically, instead of being dull and lifeless great hero, you now glamorous and exciting great enemy! Oh, we give you some of our drone ships to make even more interesting. Yes, it's going to be lots more fun. Here, let me show you. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Fuck, dude. Heck. You can't kill them all. Ah! Oh! I just crashed into the fucking home world. Motherfucker. How do you know? Have you tried it? I want my money. I still get money if I no salvage. Is he just playing a joke on me? In a faggot? Well, Bob, my people, if you're an earthling again, it's just a 
us doesn't matter, does it? Two arms? Two arms? Wait a minute. Don't have any arms. Ah, oh, my arms. My arms. Who's stolen my arms? Arm thief. Arm thief. <laughs> Never had any arms. <laughs> What? He survived! Okay. I lost a hundred crew. Oh. <laughs> oh Oh shit! The analysis reads as follows. Subject, talking pet life form. Data, this creature is physiologically identical to the so-called Urquan talking pet with one notable exception. It is highly intelligent and evidences strong psychic capabilities. Initial AIQR test rated it well above human super genius, though immediately after we made this shocking assessment, its scores dropped to the normal subnormal range. Interviews with the subject have shown it to be cooperative, though a class 4 pan species psychological profile places the creature far into the furtive, hateful domain. There were also some disturbing incidences where we talked about roses, daisies, and other pretty flowers. <laughs> Summary, everything's okay, nothing to worry about with this cuddly little guy, not one thing. That's the end of our scientist report. Yeah. <laughs> Return soon, Captain. Migrating again, God damn it.
I can probably stop them. Hey. dedicated to returning home to heal our dysfunctional species structure. We understand that you mean well, but there is nothing you can do to dissuade us this time. Nothing but material possessions, Captain. We, Pekak, having risen to the 99th septic plane, Clutterhead, are far beyond Tapping our spiritual needs with crude matter. Shit, dude. I lost it? Wait. Fuck. Oh no, no, I see it. Welcome back, Captain, to our humble planet. It is good once again to merge our chakras with the totality of your spiritual essence. We speak, of course, metaphorically. How can we be of aid to you? The time has come, Captain, for our reunification with the Yehak. We must proceed. Actually, they, they already gave it to me. Clear spindle? Ah, uh, damn it. Can I get that? Not at all! We are, after all, a fascinating species! Of course, modesty prevents me from talking at length. Although, perhaps if you were to ask me specific questions, propriety might be better served.
I already have clear spindle from
activated. And now we return to the golden path. Our yeah hot brethren await. I wanna go to Beetlejuice. Oh my god! <laughs> hey, space station! Attention, unidentified space vessel. Be warned. This slave world and its inhabitants belong to the Earth One. I am Starbase Commander Talana of the slave mm -hmm. planet Gaia. Your ship oh, is no. not responding to standard hierarchy identification sequences. You are therefore classed as independent. And what? Is my monitor display correct? Is that a human commanding that vessel? Who are you? We're the ethics pop police. Justify that costume immediately. I'm the right one for you, baby! <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I should have saved. Hello, Captain. But you haven't answered my question fully. Why are you here? Where are you from? Has the slave shield been lifted from Earth? Are the Urquan finally defeated? Simply put, Captain, what do you want from us? Hey, baby. Look, Shane, <laughs> get this through your head. <laughs> Under other circumstances, I might be interested in your antics. Mm. I'm cute. But we've got a serious situation here, and we don't have time to fool around. 
I remember that. <laughs> and so are yours. If the Urquan discover that you have been here, I don't know what they'll do to us, much less you. Now get serious, please. I'm serious. Look, Captain, I like you. Even though you're an obnoxious human, I like you. In another time, we might have become good friends. Perhaps more. But that's a fantasy, and my job is dealing with reality. We're not going to do anything to jeopardize what we've got here. We've come too far, lost too much, to ever risk losing Gaia, our new home. Don't get all judgmental on me, Captain. You don't know what we've been through. When the Urquan conquered us over 20 years ago, I was only a young girl living in Habitat 31. My older sister Diani was a starship officer in the space patrol. She was part of the final defense at Raynet. She didn't make it back. When the Urquan caught us in open space, we all thought we were going to die. But then, instead of killing us, the Urquan offered us a choice. We could join the ranks of their combat thralls, or we could be slave shielded in our homeland. Like the people of Earth, we chose peace. We became fallow slaves. When the Urquan told us to return to our homeworld, we explained that we had none. Urquan Master Nine explained that they had encountered this situation before, and if we would provide them with a list of our requirements, they would use their extensive astronomical data stores to find a planet for us. So we Pretty told nice. them about Syra, about the color of its sky, about the abundant life forms, about the fertility of the soil and seas. Less than an hour later, we received a terse message from Master Nine. We were to proceed to these coordinates and disembark. This was to be our new home. But our new world, Gaia, was everything we described. We'd been searching for a home planet for 75 years, and in the end, it was our enemies who gave one to us. I grew up on a small island off the main continent, and like all of my people, we lived each day under the sick, red glow of the slave shield. When the Urquan arrived seven years ago to refurbish and recruit his starbase, I was selected as the new commander. When we first met your people, we've been wandering through the stars for almost 75 years, ever since the death of Syra, our home planet. We joined your alliance and I use the word joined loosely, because we had no other choice. The Vox were raiding our slow habitat columns, and we had nowhere else to go. We fought for survival, Captain, nothing more. When your people on Earth were defeated, the Alliance just plain fell apart. The Yehat and Shofixi retreated to their native stars and didn't want us to follow. The Ariru, those creepy little weasels, just plain bugged out. Vanished, leaving us alone, with nowhere to go, smack in the path of the oncoming Urquand Armada. What were we supposed to do? Fight? Two-thirds of our habitat fleet was unarmed. Many aren't even superluminal. We were going to be annihilated if we resisted, and we knew it. When the Urquan surrounded us and started giving orders that all ended with, or die, we took them at face value. We obeyed. In exchange, they gave us Gaia, the planet below. It's a beautiful world, Captain. I wish I could show it to you. So don't misunderstand me. We love our freedom as much as anybody else. But we've got a good life here. 
and we don't want to lose it. Our species are almost identical, almost too close a match to be just a coincidence. Our bodies are very similar, Captain. Mm. Yeah. Except for certain parts. Oh. Our cultural development is also mostly parallel. Like you Earthlings, we evolved a society from primitive tribes whose main function were to protect themselves from the large reptiles native to our old world. The main difference between our two sets of cultures the split in the paths of our development occurred in what would have been your prehistory, say 5000 BCE. In your world, the agricultural communities were conquered by the more primitive, but also more aggressive migratory herding peoples. This led to a particular kind of sexual and political dominance structure which pervaded almost all of your Earth cultures until the early 21st century. On Syrah, our only primitive migratory tribes were confined to our mountainous regions. Their herd beasts, the Weimar, did not do well in the agricultural basins and plains. The two cultures were isolated until much later, when the technological superiority of the farmers curtailed any major conflict. It was our paradise, Captain, our Eden. Earth is the only world we know of whose variety and richness of life even comes close to Syra. Again, like so many other things about our two species, our worlds were very much the same. At least before you began encasing yours in concrete and plastic. Syra's gravity was a bit lighter than Earth's, and its day was 50% longer. Our diurnal cycle is therefore different from yours. We spend 20 hours awake, followed by 10 hours horizontal. I get horizontal with you. Uh, okay, uh, what happened? This subject is very difficult for us, Captain. But I will try to recount those sad days. Like your solar system, Ours had a large population of comets and asteroids. Large meteor impacts, though rare, were not unheard of on our planet. So it was not a total shock when an asteroid penetrated our atmosphere and hit the surface. What was odd was that unlike most other meteors, this one was not pulverized on impact. It penetrated the crust and indeed went all the way through to the mantle, causing a super volcano. The earthquakes caused by the impact were severe. The magma pumped out of the caldera wreaked significant damage on the nearby terrain, but within a few weeks it had cooled, forming a solid rock bandage over the wound. Within a few months, we had cleaned up the mess. The caldera was calming down nicely, and things were pretty much back to normal. Then. Just over a year after the impact, all hell broke loose on the surface of Syra. Huge calderas were opening all over, not just around the meteor impact, but everywhere. The scope of the disaster is impossible to imagine. Entire cities sliding into oceans of molten lava, kilometer-wide sections of land pulverized by a cataclysmic explosion, and clouds of poison gas and superheated steam created a death shroud around Syra. Yes, I think so. Aren't they part of the Mykon religion somehow? We have recordings of Mykon hyperwave transmissions from the war. Pretty weird stuff. The Mykons just kind of rambled, never making much sense. They talked a lot about deep children and spears of light, but we couldn't ever understand what they were talking about. What? What did you say? Human, you had better not be joking. Syra is not a subject for Earth humor. 
Now, what do you mean, shattered planet crusts? How? That is what happened to Syrah, yes. But we presumed it was a natural cataclysm, a meteor. Do you have proof that it was something else? These deep children? Where the fuck did I learn this from? Hmm. Maybe some other time, Captain. I can show you the hidden functionality of my uniform. Knife included. When Syrah was destroyed, the only people who survived were in orbit, and most of them were members of our newly established, mostly female, space patrol. From their ships, their orbital platforms, and their lunar outposts, they watched Syrah die. Within three days after the cataclysm began, the surface temperature of Syrah had risen by almost 75 degrees to above the boiling point of water. It became clear that Syrah, our paradise, our Eden, was gone. The survivors spent years in orbit. They made a few missions to the surface and actually found a handful of survivors. But their main activity was to make preparations for departure. The space patrol fitted makeshift drive units to anything that could hold air, orbital factories, research pods, even hotels. When the fleet was ready, they left orbit and never looked back. The final population of our species was less than 10,000, with only 500 males. But they were the best and the brightest. For the next 75 years, our people wandered at sub-like speed through the stars, looking for a new home. <laughs> Don't worry about us, Captain. We make out all right. Captain, if what you say is true, it would turn my world upside down. You have no sorrow to match what each of us Sirene feels every day of our lives when we remember what we have lost. Syra, our Eden. The very idea that the Mycons or any alien race may have been responsible for Cyrus' destruction filled me with burning rage. If it were true, none of us here would rest. If it were true, none of us here would rest until we had avenged ourselves on the perpetrators. We would find some way to leave this starbase, locate our starships, and hunt down the evil monsters. Captain, if you ever gather proof of what you say, you must inform us immediately. But until then, do not mention the subject again. It is too painful. Until then, Earthling. still have to uh I 
Ah, sí. I still need to talk to the Vux for the ores. Victorious. That gold planet. Oh, it's gonna be. Oh, a red coral.
Officer of the Crimson Corporation. We are the Druge. We are delighted to make your acquaintance and hope that we can do business together. Should your desires be similar, please hurry to our main trading world at Zeta Persai 1. Oh. More than a culture, Captain. We are an organization. The Crimson Corporation. Our corporation seeks only to improve our quality of life, and does so via the dribble-down effect. The <laughs> dribble-down effect. Made in 1992. <laughs> Until we meet. Attention, alien starship. You have arrived at the central trade world of the Crimson Corporation, home of the Druge. Be welcome and take advantage of our excellent deal. We note you possess the Vortex Spawner. In exchange for the simple device, we will give you three molar starships. And fill your fuel tanks at no extra charge. We are prepared to make a deal. Hell no. Us. Very well. Since this is your first time trading with us, Captain, Allow me to explain our standard operating procedures. We will sell you fuel, ancient artifacts, even our own Mauler starships. All that we ask in return is that you assign some of your crew 
to serving here in our trade world on a permanent basis. No, 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 Captain. Slaves have no choice in their destiny. No freedom. We would never accept the permanent assignment of one of your people unless we knew that they had granted you the rights to make such a deal. People as skilled as your flagship's crew will receive immediate posts in our Starfleet. They will serve alongside our own true starship personnel, sharing every duty. This is a great loss, I suppose. But we will not make an exception in your case. However, please try to be receptive to what I am about to say. We have taken the liberty of entering your ship's computer system to investigate the agreement signed by the Earthly Volunteers, who serve aboard your vessel. As we expected, we found that they have promised to obey you, Captain. Under every circumstance, no exceptions. You are fully within your rights to deal with us in our required manner. Should you change your mind, we will always be ready to work with you. This is the heart of our operation, the vital core of the Crimson Corporation. A million deals are made here each day, perhaps more. You would be wise to take advantage of all our services, Captain. You will not find better deals anywhere. Since this is your first time trading with us, Captain. Excellent. Let us begin. Our inventory presently includes the Rosy Sphere, an ancient precursor artifact of unrivaled beauty and mystery. Yours for the amazing bargain of only one. The Trident of Wimbley. Not just one, but fully three mystic prongs. Give this artifact its awesome capabilities. Are you strong enough to master its power, or will it master you? Cost? 100 crew. The Glowing Rod. What unearthly powers will you gain? When you hold this coruscating staff high above your head and scream, Kai Lai Chi Lai Yi! And it can be yours for only 100 crew. As always, we also have an unlimited supply of exceptionally high performance starship fuel at a cost of 10 crew for 10 units of fuel as well as a freshly assembled Mauler starship, which we will trade for 100 of your crew. What? Well, there's some way I can not trade people? I ran out of ice.
as you wish. Return soon, Captain. Your patronage is appreciated. Kabasa. Ah, the young starship captain from Earth. We hope your adventures have brought you wealth. How can we be of service? You wish to know more about us? Excellent. After all, knowledge should be free. Ain't hey, Captain? Let's see. About us, well, we are the Crimson Corporation. And the Crimson Corporation is us. When the Corporation's earnings are up, our quality of life soars and our benefit packages improve. <laughs> the further up the ladder you are, the more you profit, individually. When times are hard, the corporation must cut costs, usually by laying off employees. Since everything on our world is corporation property, this means any ex-employee is instantly trespassing and is guilty of stealing corporation property, such as wow. air. Is the only appropriate penalty for theft is to feed the furnace. Hey. Until we meet again. Gosh. Crazy. Fucking kill them, god.
Are the male norm only at super giants or are they at giants? Smashed it into flinders. What? You didn't see it? Uh -huh. Surely you. Oh, never mind. Now, what can we do for you today? What would you like to sell, Captain? The 706. What? Six. Units of I have... biological data Jesus. Be downloaded from your ship earn you one thousand five hundred thirteen two credits. What would you like to sell, Captain? Your ship's log indicates that you discovered the whereabouts of two of the rainbow worlds, which so fascinate us. In exchange, we will give you one thousand credits. What trade items would you like to buy today? How wonderful, Captain. When the Iroquois entered Gamma Serpentis, the home star of the Yehat, their queen made a sudden change of allegiance and allied with the Urquan hierarchy. They became Urquan combat thralls. This act was viewed by most Yehat starship officers as ultimately dishonorable, the desperate act of a corrupt regent to maintain her throne. The Yehat shame was greatly magnified by the Shofixti show of courage. When they destroyed their own star system to slow down the Urquan Armada. Captain, you have heard all that we have to say about aliens indigenous to this region. Should we learn more in the near future, we shall be certain Wait. to sell it to you. This. Almost. 25,000 of your years ago, there existed near this region of space an association of star-faring races called the Sentient Milieu. This group formed over several thousand years to mutually enrich their respective cultures to provide a safe crash for emerging sentient species and to afford themselves a degree of protection from external hostilities via military lives. Of the seven most active milieu members, the most famous race, indeed, you know them well, Captain, were the Urquan. The Urquan evolved on a harsh planet orbiting a star outside this region of space. They were solitary predators, like your brain mantis captain, or polar bear, who had a very limited set of social behaviors, most of which dealt with sex. Since they had to compete for survival against many physically superior species, the Urquan evolved intelligence and tool use in much the same way as your own species. The Urquan also learned to master their fierce 
territoriality, to build a cooperative planetary culture. When the Urquan were discovered by the Taeo, they had just begun exploring their solar system in crew atomic vehicles. Although the Urquan attacked what they thought to be an invader, the Taeo were patient. They explained the purpose of the sentient milieu and offered the Urquan membership. The Urquan recognized the benefits that such a system provided and once more conquered the hunting beast within themselves to become cooperative, productive members of the milieu. This lasted for several thousands of years. Just over 20,000 years ago, when your ancestors were learning to chart the course of the moon and stars on animal horns, the sentient milieu spanned 500 light years and included the membership of a hundred worlds. Like all other star travelers, they had discovered ruins and relics of a far more ancient culture, which your species calls the Precursors. Explorers from many species spent their lives trying to piece together this ancient mystery. But of all races, the Urquan were the most bold adventurers. Their scouts, flying single ships, penetrated far into uncharted space and landed from a million worlds. On one such mission, a young Urquan made planet fall on a small, life-bearing alien world to identify some anomalous energy readings occasionally a sign of precursor installations. Instead, the Urquan found a small, hideous creature, a Dinyari. Before the scout was able to defend itself, the Dinyari creature took control of the Urquan's mind and commanded the scout to place the Dinyari aboard the Urquan's ship, along with hundreds of its evil brood. Then, the Urquan returned to the heart of the milieu, landing on its capital planet. Within hours, every resident of the planet was a Dinyari slave. Within a month, Dinyari compelled starships and spread the evil, psychic creatures across the entire milieu. When the Dinyari took control of the milieu, one race fought back, the Taeo. These slow, quiet creatures were silicon-based life forms, but bore little resemblance to the modern Genjesu. Taeo were natural immune to the Dinyari psychic compulsion. They were unaffected by the creature's power, and the Dinyari would not permit anyone to exist outside their control. So they ordered the remaining races of the milieu to attack and destroy the Taeo home planet. This planet was one of the few milieu worlds located in this region of space. I believe you call their star Delta Vulpecule. Their home was a moon revolving about the second planet. I'm sad to say that the Taeo were indeed eliminated. However, at the time of their devastation they had completed a device which they thought would give other races psychic immunity like their own. What happened to this device, this Abbott. shield? It's hard to say. Maybe it was destroyed in the attack on their home world. Maybe not. In the Dinyare's new empire, the Urquan were the favored slaves. 
This is probably because the Iroquois were the most psychically sensitive, the most easily compelled. As the centuries of Dinyari dominance passed, what was once the sentient milieu deteriorated and degenerated into a great galactic gulag. Alien races which did not serve with the efficiency and speed demanded by the Dinyare were ruthlessly burned from the faces of their worlds. The agents of this genocide were inevitably the Dinyare's favorite pet, the Urquan. After almost 2,500 years of unrelenting Dinyare control, there were only four living member races of the once great sentient milieu. By this point, the Dinyare had used genetic manipulation to split the Urquan into two subspecies. The green Urquan. Scientists, technicians, and administrators who were responsible for maintaining the limited infrastructure of the Dinyari civilization and the Black Urquan, who filled the ranks of basic laborer and combat soldier. Then, a chance discovery by an Urquan named Kazerza led to the violent overthrow of the Dinyari Slave Empire. The Urquan named Kazerza was a green, a researcher specializing in repairing the mental damage inflicted by long-term exposure to the Dinyari's psychic compulsion. By this point in history, the Dinyari had grown lax in their dominance, and on occasion accidentally permitted their slaves moments of self-direction. Gazette Zaha was able to use those few scattered minutes to compose a theory. From its observations, Gazette Zaha realized that when a slave died, Dinyari disconnected from the slave's mind, lest it too be dragged down to death. Further, the Irkwan scientist uncovered the fact that when a slave underwent great pain, the Dinyari temporarily disconnected. But that the degree of pain had to be extreme, nearly lethal. Kazerza chose its moment carefully. It waited until it was near an open transmission unit. Then, in a short moment of mental freedom, the Urquan injected itself with a dose of acidic poison, sending incredible waves of pain through its long body. In the few moments before its death, Kazerza was able to wrest control of the transmitter to send word of its discovery across the planet and into space as well. Before the Dinyari knew what was happening, Urquan everywhere were hacking at their own bodies with chunks of glass, burning themselves horribly, doing anything that would give them the few seconds of freedom necessary to find the nearest Dinyari and crush the bleeding creature. As they gained longer and longer periods of control, the Urquan developed new tools and weapons to destroy their evil masters. The most gruesome of these devices was the excruciator, a mechanism which was inserted directly into the brain and generated a constant stream of agony. The Dinyari 
could not bring themselves to make the necessary mental connection with these tortured Urquan. They were slaughtered by the thousands. The Urquan slave revolt was won. When the last Urquan was free of psychic compulsion, when the last free Dinyare was dead, the combined might of the Urquan star fleets met in orbit above the Dinyare homeworld. They had come together to make two important decisions. First, how to punish the few frightened Dinyare left below on the planet's surface. Second, how to ensure that never again would the Earth One be made slaves. The first decision was made swiftly. The Dinyari would not be allowed to die. Ah, that was too kind a fate. Instead, the creatures would be genetically modified into some sentience they would become dumb animals. These low creatures would be further debased by serving the Urquan for all eternity in the most demeaning way the Urquan could imagine, acting as translators, making physical contact with other species, whom the Urquan now considered grossly inferior to themselves and revolting. The second decision, how to ensure their freedom permanently, caused great turmoil. Following the successful Urquan slave revolt, the Urquan met to decide how to ensure their freedom. The green Urquan, who called themselves the Khazert Zah in honor of the Urquan who triggered the revolt, wished to establish the path of now and forever which required that all other sentient species must become slaves of the Urquan or be forever imprisoned beneath an impenetrable force shield. Leading the opposition to this plan was Kora, a charismatic fleet officer. Kora proposed a simpler alternative, the Eternal Doctrine. Simply put, this scheme called for the systematic eradication of all sentient life in the universe, aside from the Iroquois. Captain, if these positions seem to you extreme or unwarranted, you must remember that the Iroquois had been unwilling slaves for millennia, and that each of them had to remain in agony for years in order to defeat the Dinyari. The followers of Kazetza and Kora were all on the brink of madness, but neither side would submit, and so they fought a bloody civil war. This is the last historical item we have for sale. The civil war between the green Urquan, the followers of Khazet Zah, and their opponents, the death demon Kora, lasted for decades. It is likely that they would have annihilated each other, were it not for a chance discovery by Khazet Zah, a precursor battleship. The vessel was huge, many times the size of the Urquan's vessels. The precursor ship sliced through the Kora forces in days. The Kora were defeated. However, in their victory, the Kazetsa were humble. They realized that there was a chance that they were wrong, and the Kora were right. Instead of destroying the Kora, the Kazerza let them go, directing them to make their way through the stars 
traveling against the spin of the galaxy. The Kazerzar would travel in the opposite direction, and when the two Urquan forces met, they would fight again in ritual combat, with the precursor battleship given to the winner. Captain, this is happening here and now. The Kazerzar, the Urquan who enslaved her, are fighting their ritual battle against the Kola in a large area centered near the Craterous constellation. If the Kora win this battle, Captain, the Kazerza will stand aside and let them kill us all. We believe it is your destiny to prevent this from happening. We regret to say that you have exhausted our supply of genuinely valuable information. However, we do have many thousands of useless facts, and that we will gladly sell you at a substantial discount. Are you interested? Hmm, we thought not. Oh, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Not the information I was looking for, but good information nonetheless. Trying to get info on um, guys. Hold over them to shit. Need to get that. <laughs> Need to get that ship though. Want to get that pre? Want that green? The fucking precursor ship. transferred to your vessel. It has been a pleasure dealing with you, Captain. We look the Umga caster do anything to the Umga? Okay for now.
Yeah. Captain, uh, the payload device on board this vessel is, uh, giving me a headache. Please remove it. Now, Captain. It is foolish to resist. Hmm. It remains more effective than I thought. You're still able to disobey. Ah, uh, well. What can I do for you, Captain? Fucking guy. It is cold and empty. I could use a thermal blanket. Since it is incredibly boring down here, I am using the opportunity to try and get some sleep. The first thing I do is to make sure I have a strong ship and fleet. I consider such a question to be intrusive and impolite, but that is consistent with your behavior. What do you want to know? You mean my superior brain? My mental prowess? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Captain, I don't think you meant to ask about my powers. Didn't you mean to ask about flowers? Flowers are beautiful and smell nice. Now, be a good human and leave me alone. An excellent idea, Captain. You must have a great deal of work to attend to. Goodbye. Uh, I guess I'll go do the MyCon thing. I don't know, I wanna go... Get that thing from the Gooch. I don't wanna go away 100 people. I have no incest. On the star map. That pointer to their home. What the fuck is that? I've never even heard of that. Oh my- oh so I should go to Mike. Erm, erm, and Josu Homeworld? Check that out like- <coughs> fuck. I actually go there now. Oh my god. Guys. I have my license.
Jesu, we are the Mernhelm. We do not understand how you have penetrated the slave shield or why, but in doing so you have interrupted the process. Explain this intrusion. We cannot be of any assistance now. We are in the middle of the process. I will explain. After we, Chen Jesu, and Bernhelm were defeated by the Urquan, we chose to be encased in a single slave shield on this world. As soon as the Urquan departed, we began the process. We initiated a synthesis of our two species, our two cultures, one crystalline, the other purely mechanical. This process, fueled only by the radiant energy of our sun, will eventually produce a new hybrid race. And when the process is complete, we will crack the Urquan slave shield and emerge from our chrysalis like a winged insect unleashed from its cocoon. Then we will be ready and capable to deal with the Urquan, their battle thralls, and their dreaded Samatra. The complete synthetic hybridization of the Chen Jesu and the Murderm species will require approximately 35 of your Earth years. This extended duration is necessary because our synthesis mechanisms are dependent exclusively on the light of our sun for energy. What you describe is theoretically possible, but it would pose a great danger to us. The process must be executed as planned, or it may fail catastrophically. We would be destroyed. Though your ship's design is unfamiliar to us, we now understand that you are of human origin, and so we will share with you our reasons for accepting the status of Urquan Slave. In 2135, our great alliance burned within the crucible of sentience. Though our fleets of armed starships held back the hierarchy's grotesque armada for many years, in the end, the Urquan unleashed a power upon us that was so overwhelming, we knew we would be annihilated if we did not submit. This unstoppable power, this ultimate weapon, was a huge starship, an unstoppable battle platform built by the precursors in the ancient past. 
Your vessels share some similarities in design to the Urquan's battle platform, which they call Samatra, meaning Great Trophy. The Samatra was many times larger than your ship and bore weapons and defensive systems that made it invulnerable to all of our technologies. It remains a mystery to us why the Urquan fought us for so long without using the Samatra. But when they finally brought the ship into combat, the Samatra incinerated our finest brood home vessels from ten times our own ship's weapon range. We had no choices beyond submission or devastation. Before the Urquan arrived to accept our surrender, we sent one last message to your people. A message suggesting that your species do as we Chenjesu and Murnherm plan to do. We would accept the Urquan's demands and become slaves until such a time as we found a way to destroy or neutralize the Samatra. Samatra! Our wisdom is available. Detail your need. You must find some way to destroy the Samatra. Samatra! To do this, you will need a powerful weapon capable of destroying an entire planet. But that is not all. You will also require some way to distract the Urquan to give you the opportunity to use the weapon. <laughs> only from legend, where they are described as the embodiment of evil and cruelty. If ever there was a devil, Captain, it was the Dinyari. However, if in fact the creature you possess is one of this ancient breed, its mental power may be useful to help confuse the Urquan. Though your presence here is a painful intrusion, we will always provide advice whenever you request it, Captain. Goodbye once and future ally, human. When the process is complete and we emerge from our chrysalis, I shall tell your grandchildren of our conversation this day. Can I use the... Can I use the Denari on the Druid, guys? Face faggot coming. I'll get some. Oh, dude, I haven't seen. We are part of Jafferwa. Jafferwa is the hot light in the darkness. All else is unfulfilled void. Huh? The source of Jaffa Wap is at 629.1 by 220.8. We are the Minecraft. All, all the source of Jaffa Wap 
is at 629.1 by 220.8. We a single spore lands, finds nourishment in decay, and soon attains maturity. In turn, it exhales a cloud of new life. A thousand spores, each lands, finds nourishment in decay. So progresses gentle one. Jeffo one fills in my fibers, and I grow turgid, violent action ensues. Ah! Nigga, what? Why is he... Why is he tripping? Ouch. Ouch. For those coordinates, six. Okay. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> Fucking gazers, man. Oh, I missed. Holy shit, take mushrooms. Stop. Jumper Rock is all omni existent. Spreading and changing the non into Jaffawa. You are non who must become Jaffawa or void. We are the agents of Jaffawa. We are the Mycon. Our bodies seethe with the passion of our genes. A thousand of your species do not possess the richness in one of my cells. I fill with my parents, 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 parents. I am they, and they are us, then and now. The deep children are a part of Jeffel One, home builders. The dwellers in the mobile roaches. You impede the flow of Jeffawa through the universe. We will now remove this clog. Bitch. Come on, come on, come on. Ah oh, man, the bomb.
Bitch, fucking flying backwards and shit. Get out of here. Touch me. Can I get information about? I mean, I see on this star map there's a bunch of places I can go to. Like, I think I really got any information as to why to go. But from you, I don't like that. Five, six. I can't hate. Why should I? Gun device. Okay, fair enough. Oh, it's the sirens all the world. It's sound like Syra or Syra. I don't know. Ah. Hey, but no, well, I mean. Did tell me what it was, but I don't remember. Actually, it's the name of the world. Oh, whatever. Whatever, I'll just find these things. Cheating in this map. Okay. Faggot. <laughs> I can't drive this thing. <laughs> no, whatever. Oh. 
Huh? Your noises. Like it. Oh shit. What? Out of here. I can shoot their stuff. Fuck, I need to load my...
Ah! and healing himself? Planet hiding here. Oh shit, nigga, what? The fuck is this? Oh, I'm in the wrong place. Uh, yeah, uh, this is a special Jeffo Bluff is the power of life. Hot warm in the cold void. It flows through all things, binding them together. Yeah, I'm leaving. Bye. Yeah. No, I don't know that. Uh, one. Shit. We are... I died of general misfortune. 
Jeffo Wong. <laughs> Alright, I should just leave.
Oh. Play the wrong play. Fuck, <laughs> I'm doing. Ah, oh, it's the Micon. Of course! Oh my god, logic. In their, their sphere, of course. So dumb. That was dumb. Good to see you again, Captain. There's something I think you should know. Oh. This seems strange to me, and I considered not bringing it up, but not long ago, six of my people fell unconscious simultaneously for no apparent reason. When they awoke hours later, they reported being overwhelmed by a feeling of something very wrong that had taken place. The med techs couldn't find anything wrong with these crew members, but they discovered one correlation. All six of them have exceptionally high Esper ratings. More fuel for the fire, eh, Captain? That last load should keep it blazing. This seems strange to me, and I considered not bringing it up, but not long ago, six of my people fell unconscious simultaneously for no apparent reason. When they awoke hours later, they reported being overwhelmed by a feeling of something very wrong that had taken place. The med techs couldn't find anything wrong with these crew members, but they discovered one correlation. All six of them have exceptionally high Esper ratings. The analysis reads as follows. Subject, Micon egg case. Data? We really didn't know Micon came from eggs, but our analysis of this sheath shows that it's been subjected to phenomenal temperatures and pressures. The most unusual aspect of the egg case is its size. We know Micon's range in height from 0.5 to 3.5 meters, but our reconstruction of the whole egg case shows it to be over 25 meters high. Summary. If a Micon came out of this, he's got to be really big. That's the end of our scientist report. We shall await your return, Captain. More dots, more green dots, thank you.
Okay, you said that only. But of course, the home world would have been in my kind of territory if they cared for me. That's why I can make that connection. Also, a rainbow world. <laughs> ah! Oh no 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 no! Oh no! That train. Yeah, this one. Bitch. Secondary? The hell is too fast? Dude, that ship's fast. I get. Ah. Uh. Before time.
Oh, oh, no battery. Dude, this is hard. Oh my god. Controller would, yeah, definitely be a lot better. And then I die after you say that. It's, I don't know. It's tough because like you need to aim at a, you know, precisely at a target, but you're pressing like keyboard. I mean, when you're pressing key, it's really hard to get the fine, fine movements down. Yeah, I think I think definitely enjoy this updated graphic. It's the same game. A lot more clear. We are oh. a cold rock pulsing. I enjoy this like uh, better graphics on this version, the H mod or whatever. A lot clearer. Essentially, the same game. I mean, it is the same, but I could transfer. And it just looks a lot clearer. Yeah. Oh. Auto aim. Aim assist. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, what the fuck, dude? Try out which is to be and tell me what. End up getting the series. So. Never played one. Heard bad. Number two was pretty. Again, pleasant human. It warns me to greet you again. Let me see this proof, Captain. Great gods! These fragments, they are identical to the debris we found near the punctures on Syra. We never guessed that the fragments might be organic. To have survived re-entry, nothing organic would remain. Unless... Unless it was genetically constructed for this purpose. And only the Mycons possess this capability. The Mycons will pay dearly for their crimes. We will not sit here and do nothing while the Mycon fiends are free to roam the galaxy, perpetrating their evil. You wanted our cooperation in fighting the Urquan. You got it. Provided you first help us seek our revenge against the Mycon race. Help us to destroy them. <laughs> what do I get for this, eh? Hmm? then you know what to do. <laughs> Our first step is to get some mobility. We have some fine starship officers aboard, and they're all eager to go after the Mycons. But without our penetrator starships, we're totally ineffectual. So our first step has to be recovering our space patrol combat fleet. We know that the Urquan didn't destroy them. They never waste anything. But we believe they have sealed them in some kind of deep vault in the surface of an alien planet. No, that's your job. Bitch! But maybe we have some clues to help you find them. The starship officers who flew the penetrators to the vault did so with total sensor blackout. The only thing they could use for navigation was the presence of the dreadnought fleet surrounding them. When they arrived at their destination, and lowered their ships into the immense vault, 
they were transported to the dreadnoughts and only caught a split-second glimpse of the outside world. As far as they could tell, the sun was either red or orange. Based on the trip time calculations, the farthest they could have traveled is about 200 hyperspace distance units. Captain, we've assembled a small team of our most skilled officers. We will send them to your ship on board their own small shuttle. We feel that in the interest of efficiency, we keep our officers away from your crew at least until the mission is over. As soon as you arrive at the vault, our people will take over, figure out a way to open the vault, and bring our penetrators back here. Good luck, brave Earthling. When your mission is successful, uh, then we can uh, get to know each other. this
No, 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 ah, bitch! Oh, come on, dude. God damn. Oh, damn. Come on! Fucking planet!
Oh, 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 crazy. <laughs> oh my god, that was terrible. Yeah, I'm gonna try to see if I get my... I have a sec. What? Uh, oh, you can turn the turret, you guys. Oh, what? Let them. Oh, bitch.
Oh, okay. What am I doing? Wow. <laughs> I didn't do any better. God damn it. <laughs> Chase me. Shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh my god. Yeah. 
Yes. Oh, no. Get out of there. Oh no. Uh Oh my god! Holy shit! Holy sh No way, dude. Holy fuck. Fucking kidding? That was fucking devastating, dude. What the fuck? I missed one. chambers in my mind, but I cannot understand their words. This feeling, a memory, it sickens us, and for the first time in our lives, for the first time in generations, we fear. We are the Urquan Core Ah. Your presence here is premature. We fight the Kazerza for supremacy of doctrine and possession of the Samatra. When the battle is won, our task is simple. We cleanse. You are the filth. The time has come. You require cleansing.
Locked it. Looking for the vault. That it was like 200 units, star units, away on the guy who was driving the ship on fleet. And to give the clue as to being red, red stars. Red or orange stars nearby. Looking on territory if they're gonna have a fault of sh here um Oh my god. <laughs> Found it. Fucking found it.
Hello, Captain. Nothing. I don't mean to criticize Captain. Got off, you faggot. Lobiter. <laughs> And head back. Oh my god.
Good. Now we can proceed with our plan for revenge against the Mycon. From our analysis of the deep child fragments you showed to us and a review of the recorded Mycon transmissions from the war, we've established the kind of world the Mycons desire for their hideous deep children. They need a planet like your Earth or our Syrah, one rich in water and oxygen and possessing a molten active mantle. Our plan is to lure the Mycons to such a planet and then attack them when they least expect it. We know of just such a world. When the Urquan were analyzing their massive planetary data to find a new home for my people, one of the close candidates, ranked just below Gaia, was a blue world orbiting close to the star Organon. Captain, we need your services again. Here is what you must do. You must go to the Mycon and tell Never them what you they will find that the world is suitable. And when they go to Organon, we shall be there, waiting for them. Then, we shall destroy them. Don't worry, my human. We will be together again. Someday. planet name. Fuck. And I'm tired. Write it down. Oh, I found it. Oh. Why would it? My brain's not working, man. I don't know. I thought maybe I'd get there and we set up kind of better than that. I thought I thought said lure them there. Like and not trick them into going it. Whatever.
Why would you? Oh my god, of course. We are the Jeffo one. Jeffo. Come on. Come on! Fuck! I have to leave. Your suggestion is appropriate. Acceptable new worlds are a priority for the rapid and complete spread of Jeffo Luck. We wish to know more for our suitability assessment. Tell us of this world. This is good. This is good. This is good. If your words are true, we will gladly spread the Jeffo Wap to a new world. We will assemble the birthing fleet and send them to this planet. We will send many ships to protect the children as they grow. You have been of service to us. Your insight into the ineffable Jeffo Wap is encouraging. Perhaps, if we were to plant spore sacs in your brain orbit and let its tendrils spread through your flesh, 
Then you would truly understand Jephola. Become part of Jephola. You would be happier and more fulfilled. Consider our offer. The precursors built these guys terraform planet. Supposedly oh, created the rainbow world. As in the now what are Icon are now moving down that way. Friends now. We are Jeffo. Oh, come on, dude. Are you kidding? What? Oh my god. I, of course I crashed into 40 people. <laughs> Oh shit, got away. I'll be right back. Minutes.
have brought you wealth. How can we be of service? Until we meet. It's always pleasant to see you again, Captain. Are you here today to buy or sell? We know that you have Micon Deep Child Egg Case Fragments aboard your vessel. Would you consider trading them to us for a shiny new Muller Starship? While I am sure, Captain, that you would never make this foolish mistake, I still feel I should warn you about one of our laws. Specifically, Druge Statute 3429, subsection A86. Definition of Starship Derelicts. Simply put, Captain, this statute recognizes that the universe is an inherently hostile place, and any ship which is unable to defend itself incites violence, usually because someone will try to take the unarmed ship by force. Therefore, any unarmed vessel in our space is defined as derelict, and is available for salvage by anyone who finds it. We are prepared to make a deal! Very well. Until next time, Captain. is lost in antiquity, along with the race who created it, the marvelous precursors. Note how the device glows, how it throbs, pulsing slowly, bright, then dark, like the heart of a slumbering god. Captain, this artifact has been in our possession for eons. Vast brutal wars have been fought over its possession. The offer we make to you here today is quite unique. Do not make a hasty choice. Ha <laughs> ha! You are indeed a wise young human. The rosy sphere is yours. Wait, what? I accept the deal. Very.
fuck just happened? Until next time, Captain. I thought I traded the fucking egg case. But... Tell me more about the Genesis is lost in antiquity. Marvelous, no art in vast proof. The offer we make to you here today is quite unique. Do not make a hasty choice. <laughs> I suppose, as a courtesy, I should extend an appropriate greeting. <laughs> On behalf of the Artwick Proctors, I truly hope, for your sake, that your day has been better than ours. Although this really isn't saying that much.
What good would that do? I mean, why should we? We agonized for hours, wondering if it was a cruel twist of fate, or simply a serious case of butterfingery. Ah, the lifetimes that had been spent in the pursuit of the elusive answer to this deceptively simple question has driven many of us down the dark road of self-destruction. Indeed, you... Uh, all right, I'll try. But you know it really doesn't matter. After all, we have a famous Atwood saying, when one loses the reason for existence, one tends to get less motivated. <laughs> this goes hand in hand with the painfully appropriate credo, we broke it, so we are paying for it. Of course, this isn't really accurate. The situation is so much more hideous. Imagine, if you can, holding within your hands the answer. Only to have it haunt you with its former potential. Oh, cruel irony. The loss of the Ultron grieves us all. doesn't matter. Besides being of no concern to you, I find discussion of this matter mm, distasteful. Uh, the Ultron was not only the thing which ensures total and complete meaning of life for you and I, it is universal. I'm sure that you too are aware of this thing, if only a legend. It granted us all limitless power and knowledge. It has been since, well, rendered inoperative. Ah, now you've really done it. Your latent transgressions have me hopping mad. Hop, hop, hop. Okay, that's it. Put up your dupes. No one makes fun of the ultra. Planet, bitch. Planet. Oh, oh, come on. Ah, bitch. Wait, did I get to it? Yeah, buddy. Normally, we would not bother to acknowledge your presence. But you find us in a state of moderate depression instead of our normal cycle of self-destructive tendencies. Huh. What good would that do? I mean, why should we? We agonized for hours, wondering if it was a cruel twist of fate, or simply a serious case of butterfingery. Bah. You are kind. If we could bring <laughs> the Ultron to resurrect your splib, we would. But I suddenly am overcome with waves of depression. I must retire now to perform rituals of anguish. 
Waves of trauma wash across my being even now. I must go. I have all the stuff for them. We know nothing of this species that you mention. However, while we are on the subject of evil and powerful species, we have encountered a particularly gruesome race that seemed to come from the direction of our Arcturus. When we hailed them, they responded with mighty weapons that sent our delegation to their deaths. Lucky fools. The aliens' dark, crusty battleships are capable of guiding spinning mines into almost any location. Okay. And should an enemy get too Damn. close, a fiery corona emerges to inflict fearsome damage. In our skirmishes with the race, who called themselves the Core R, we found that by using our own shielding capability, we could sweep through the mines, absorb the corona, and then get close enough to the dark ships to give a lick of our own. In truth, however, they are very powerful and ruthless. When the Core R started to press toward our homeworld, we thought that our deserved punishment was being administered. But then a mystery. They suddenly became disinterested and veered away. Bah! Confounding frustration. With the Ultron, I could speak knowledgeably on this subject. To have this quality torn from our grasp emphasizes how meaningless our existence really is. This lack of meaning is what drives my species to the serious contemplation of a quick end. Christ. Ah, your query once again painfully reminds me of the Ultron and what it was for the universe. I could tell you all and correct all that is wrong in the universe. All I can tell you is that the core are live to kill. Their stated purpose is to seek out new life and new civilizations and then annihilate them. We seem to qualify as such, and that is why it is puzzling that after pursuing us with some tenacity, they suddenly turned away and headed toward Quatiris. Ah, all of this speculation would be unnecessary if only we had saved the Ultron. It would not have taken much. A diving catch, a thrown pillow, even a fuzzy wampus would have broken the fall satisfactorily. Indeed, a panel convened to analyze the possibilities concluded that there were at least 623 ways the Ultron could have been saved if we had been prepared. <sighs> Let us cease our discussion concerning these matters. Ha! Ah, to say the least, our past is one of a glorious and proud people coupled with a cataclysm that rocks the universe to its very core. It all began when the Chilt rose from the murky bog and the Utwig emerged as well. In these primitive times, we cavorted about our world, oblivious to any sort of higher purpose. We took everything at face value. Meanwhile, the tendrils of the Chimt infiltrated the vast sky canopies of Faz, and then the veils fell. Suddenly, the Atwig was stunned by a collective realization. All immediately and urgently donned veils of every description, hides, leaves, shells, rocks, and even living drills were donned in the early days. You see, the face is the mechanism that expresses many of the primitive qualities that hinder sentience. Now rid of the constant reminders of greed, rage, hatred, and lust, the wisdom of the Utwig was no longer hampered by constant reminders of the primitive urge. Over many generations, mass etiquette was refined to a rock-solid foundation of our society. Sure, the morality riots were expensive, both in lives and in infrastructure. But the result was better mask regulation, specification from your basic mask of grueling but necessary activity to the most highly decorated countenance of stellar representation. These were clearly defined. Recognizing the importance of flexibility, clear-cut and efficient procedures for revision and redesign dealt with the few anomalies. From that moment when we covered the source of our intellectual oppression, we knew that it was a grand purpose that defined our destiny. 
Are you still listening? Our entire development as a sentient species was coordinated to coincide with the appearance of a remarkable device. The Ultron. We were oblivious to its tragic implication. In order for you to truly understand the situation, you need to know more about the Ultron and its unique capabilities. You see, when the Druge discovered the Ultron, they knew that it was ours. The Druge were compelled by intrinsic, universal direction to take it to where it has always belonged. They brought it to us. Oh, the Ultron. It assured total and complete meaning of life for all. The Universal. With the Ultron in hand, I could sense not only your motivations and desires, but your purpose. I could act upon these things in ways that would most likely seem mysterious, if not, well, daft. Years later, you would herald our participation in your development as the turning point for your species. The Druge were only one of the few to benefit in this way. Even now, they are puzzled by the way we rewarded them for the delivery of the Ultron to its correct place. In 24 years, 2 months, and 3 days, they will all dance the dance of jubilation. Indeed, the Ultron has allowed us to fundamentally change the Druge forever. The Supox too received many benefits from our use of the Ultron. They can testify to its power. Yes, things were perfect. What happened is, well, I, it is difficult to talk about. But I saw it happen. I witnessed the Chin's Raal celebration. I felt the Ultron fill the empty place that I did not know was there. I saw the Grand Proctor pass it to, well, they say that the Chief Gru did not know that it was so heavy and slippery. Perhaps it was a combination of factors. Some who have reviewed the records claim that it was actually a conspiracy. The Commission investigation officially stated that the Ultron was rendered inoperative by the fall to the ground, yet many feel that the whole story has not yet been told. As it struck the ground, I saw its glow fade, and then the painful void incapacitated all. All Utwick immediately donned the mask of ultimate embarrassment and shame with a vow to wear it forever. Bonfires all over Faz consumed all but this mask. No other mask was spared. The visage of ceremonial orations in all its contexts and revisions, as I'm sure you understand. All of the courting masks, from the clever and intriguing veil of flirtatious prancing to the infamous lewd monocle, all were consumed by the hungry flames. Even the most fundamental fixtures were committed to this irreversible fate. The mask of natural bodily excretions once hung in every lavatory. Most of the public facilities have removed the disposable mask dispensers, but every once in a while I still see such a repository. Always empty. <sighs> in despair, we gave the broken device to our allies, the Supox, who live at Beta Libre. We just couldn't stand to look at it any longer. At that time, many suggested that we use the precursor relic as a form of self-punishment. The proposal was that we collectively go to the second moon of the sixth planet. At that time, many suggested that we use the precursor relic as a form of self-punishment. The proposal was that we collectively go to the second moon of the sixth planet of Zeta Hyades at coordinates 850.3, 937.2. And used the ancient planetarian device to end our existence. After much discussion, we decided that we deserve to suffer. We can use the bomb if we ever decide the time is right. In the meantime, we atone for our grievous mistake with our collective misery. I suddenly sink into a chasm of depression. I must go. I... Uh, As do we. Go now.
Greetings, fellow oh. carbon creature. May your roots always be well watered. I am Captain Ala Lala. We come to you. Our starship is called the Tender Shoot. Tender Shoot. We are the Supox Utricularia from Earth. From Earth? Oh, yes. We apologize for the confusion. Our home world is also called Earth. Or more properly, Fleck. Which means perfectly good and nutritious dirt. Earth is pretty close, is it not? Okay. Oh, yes. We have a strong cultural bond with the Utwig. They have been the foundation around which we have grown our star-faring culture. We are not only allies, but we are also friends. You should go meet with them. They could use some excitement. You see, they are a little depressed and morose right now. Usually they are most festive and fun. They broke their Ultron. The Druge, the cruel, foul trading race who sold the device to the Utwig, called the device the Ultron, and claimed that it would give the Utwig super powers. Unfortunately, the Utwig believed the Druge and bought the Ultron. However, the device did make the Utwig very happy. Of course, we didn't tell them what we really thought of the Ultron. That they were vapid fools to buy a piece of junk for a planet's ransom. We went along with the falsehood, and in doing so showed our own stupidity. Then, one sad day a few years ago, the Hootwig Proctor dropped the Ultron during a particularly energetic and festive ritual. Now the Utwig are morose and depressed. They feel they cannot ever achieve greatness because they lost the powers of the Ultron. They even gave the broken device to us, saying that they couldn't stand the sight of it anymore. We are worried that the Utwig are so depressed that they may use their ultimate weapon. Here, you take the Ultron. Maybe you can do something with it. <laughs> we thought that if we could get the Ultron working again, it would cheer them up. So, we tried to figure out how to fix the darn thing. Yeah. <laughs> at least get some of the flashing bits working again. But for all the Druge's falsehoods, the Ultron is some kind of artifact. And we could not synthesize the necessary replacement parts. Perhaps on your journeys, you will find the elements necessary to repair the Ultron. Then you could give it to the Utwig, and maybe they wouldn't be so depressed. Thanks. Peace. Your home world. Um, bam. Greetings, fellow carbon creatures. We learn and we adapt. Our kind evolved on a beautiful planet, orbiting the wonderfully green-hued star Root. Those crying faggots. Oh, come on. I didn't even see that. Our map.
Hello, Voyager. May the light always reach your lead. May sunlight and water always fall upon you. Alien vessel, grieve for the loss of both the Otwig and the universe at large. Ah! Should I set my gaze upon such a sight, I might suffer sleepless nights <laughs> for years on end. It is a symbol of the collective Otwig failure. It is our ultimate tragedy. Ah! Every divot. Every crack on its surface is etched forever in my soul. Remove it from my sight, lest I purge my... Hey, that is not the devastated Ultron. It is the image of the Ultron before. A trick. A trick! Oh, I had no idea that any species could sink so low. How dare you try to manipulate me with that cheap stage prop. Why? It's not even... Hey, wait a second. It looks like... Can it be? Yes, it is a miracle. Oh, happy day. Joyous occasion. You have our eternal thanks, Captain. <laughs> you will be immortalized as the blessed figure that delivered unto us our future. We will revere your very likeness. Let me take the upon. Yes, I feel the link, the knowledge, and the power. Hmm, it seems that there is much to do. Indeed, it seems that you should proceed to the second moon of the sixth planet of Zeta Hyades and take what you find there. We no longer have need for it. But the Ultron reveals that you will. I thank you for your part in the grand scheme. We now recover that which is ours via destiny and proceed to perform our essential service for the universe. But wait! The Ultron throbs and whistles. Matters of significance are being relayed to our brains. Oh, it has been so long since we communicated with the Ultimate in such a manner. But slowly, the truth is revealed. Our destiny. We have been directed to join with our Supox allies and attack you! What? No, wait, that's wrong. 
Oh, 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 as well as a supply of trained starship commanders. Our juggers are nigh invincible. I can also say with certainty that our allies, the Supox, will give you the same assistance. Together, we shall defeat the Core R, or at least provide you with a few more months to find a more permanent solution. Now, Captain, we must leave to prepare our battle fates. Wish us luck. No, dude, I didn't get to, uh... Second moon, I'm flying in. No, which fucking solar system? Beta, beta. This is it. Oh, that's the sun. No. <laughs> Go to the We, the appointed representatives of the Crimson Corporation, merely come to obtain the fair and reasonable payment for our goods. We traveled to this region of space years ago to sell the useless Ultron device to the Ookwig. We knew even then of the weapon on the surface below us. This was to be our price. But the Ootwing used a clever ploy to cheat us. I had convinced the morose Ootwing fools that the Ultron was the answer to all of their pitiful dreams. Powers? The Proctor's wine. Will it give us the powers we crave? I assured them that, yes, the Ultron would give them the second sight. The Ultron would allow them to see into the past and the future. The Ultron would slowly imbue each of them with unique <laughs> secret powers of great significance. The Ultron would ensure that their race's huge potential for greatness would be fulfilled. Then, 
Man, a mistake was made. Enough foolishness. We will take the precursor device from the surface and then leave. Thereafter, I may see fit to bequeath the entire planet to you, Captain, for your invaluable services in the past, provided you need them. Liar! It is we who are the genuine owners, not you, Captain. Those many years ago, when we offered the Ultron to the Ukwe, how they capered and laughed at their good fortune. Fools. Then they begged to hold the device just for a moment. To close the deal, I permitted this. A grievous mistake. The moment the High Prompter touched the Ultron, her body arched and her eyes rolled back in her head. She began to babble meaningless phrases and howl like a beast. We had expected the Uthwig to fall for our cell, to buy the useless device, but never with such gusto. Their self-doubt and lack of clear reason left them vulnerable to our every manipulation. But then, the Proctor's body relaxed, and her eyes slowly closed. When they reopened, her visual orbs shone with a wild and frightening light. This is all we could have dreamed of, and more, she intoned. And now, Drew, as to your price. I opened my mouth to speak. But before I could utter a word, the Proctor interrupted. Wait! The Ultron feeds your thoughts directly to me. Do not speak. I know what you desire. What could I say? That the Ultron was a farce and could do no such thing? I was stunned and silent. The Proctor continued. You Druze of the Crimson Corporation desire an object of great antiquity. Something of secret function and value. Very well. It shall be done. And with that, we were led to a small vault. The Proctor ceremoniously opened the door of the vault and explained that because we had been of such great service, all of the treasures within were now ours. Inside, we found a hodgepodge of ancient and useless artifacts, a glowing rod, an absurd trident, and more such junk. I could see no way to salvage the disastrous situation at that time. But when I heard of you, your <coughs> travels, and your foolish quest for freedom, I realized that you could be the agent of our justice. And lo, it is so. You have heard our justification. It is valid and unassailable. Now, go, and do not return. No, you will not. We know you are so young, Captain. It is no brighter than ours. We acknowledge our greed. We revel in it. You are the dishonest one, hiding your shame in shadows. You fabricate justifications, rationales. In the end... We are just the same. But now you stand in our way. You will not be moved. Therefore, we will add your true name to our ledger of hatred. But first, die, child, die! Yeah, I will die.
Come on, son. Oh, come on. Hello, Captain. Before we go on, I have something important to tell you. A race of plant creatures called the Supox have arrived in your absence, Captain. They offered use of their ship designs and will supply you as many starship captains as we require. I, of course, accepted their offer immediately. Also, a small contingent of Utwig has visited. After spending a few days setting up our fabricators to build their Jugger starships and providing us with a few capable commanders, they departed. Captain, if you continue to build such strong alliances, we will surely win our battle against the Urquan. The analysis reads as follows. Subject, Utwood Bomb Device. Data, analysis has yield little information about this device largely because of our technicians' unwillingness to open it or even remove the bomb from your ship. <laughs> that aside, here's what we know so far. The device is correctly defined as a bomb, one of enormous destructive potential, but it's not of Utwig origin. 
Nothing about it relates to the technology we see in the Jugger ship. We believe it to be of late precursor origin, though it somewhat resembles certain Chenjesu technology. Its original function? Probably a planeteering tool for dispersing unwanted moons. Summary? Unless there's a strong reason to do otherwise, do not activate this device. Leave it alone. Any experimentation should be conducted at least 12 astronomical units from this starbase, and preferably a bit further. That's the end of our scientists' report. All right. Goodbye, Captain.
Okay. He was saying to visit Harry Lou and talk to. Icon or faggot. Got a big bomb. Attack the ship with, I guess, the guy to distract them. Time? Am I ready to attack these guys?
Dude, those guys are... Fuck. Should I be putting those, uh... Short range lasers on my... My ship because of those guys? I don't know, man. I bet aim. I aim with just the uh, forward directional controls, as you can tell. <laughs> Success, Captain. The Micron's fleet is in shambles. Justice is ours. We have revenged ourselves against the heinous Micron's. They fell for our trap so completely. When they approached Organon 1, we were hiding behind its moon. As they approached, their ships broke combat formation in preparation for their hideous implanting ceremony. We waited until they were fully dispersed around the planet. Then we attacked. The standard Micon tactic would have been to speed out of orbit using a gravity whip maneuver. But the pod ships refused to abandon their slow-moving, deep children's spore pods. They remained in the gravity well. And we sliced them to ribbons. They must have lost a dozen ships to their own stupidity, running into their own plasmoids. The rest? Well, we took care of most of them, in our own special way. And Captain, now that we have taken our revenge Ooh. on the Micron, Business damn. You are Starship officers and penetrator designs so that you can add our ships to your fleet. Captain, the next step is to pull down the huh. time shield from our planet. In my opinion, the only people who could do that are the Chenjesi. And as far as I know, they are under a shield <laughs> of their own. Actually, I'm just dodging the real issue, Captain. Your agenda really has only one item. Destroy the Urquan hierarchy. How to do that? I'm not sure. But I know you can't take them head on, even with that amazing ship of yours. You will have to find their weak spot, and then strike it with everything you've got. I expect I'm going to be pretty busy for the next few months, overseeing repairs to our fleet of penetrator starships and preparing some kind of defensive system for this starbase. If and when the Urquan return here, we want to have a little surprise ready for them. I'm afraid our duties will keep us apart. Oh. But for now, at least there's this. That's more like it. Now. Let me help you off with this. Oh, yeah. Now, aren't you a lot more comfortable? Yeah. <laughs> oh, say that. It makes me feel so excited. It makes me want to do something nice for you. Goodbye, Captain Darling. 
We each have our jobs to do. Now you must go. But you will remain always yes. in my mind and heart. And <laughs> within me. I know that someday, when all this madness has come to an end, like this. <laughs> oh, Chinjesu. What? Did I Chinjesu for more than once? Anyways, there's an item of in. No idea what. It what they fucking moved back? Dang right. The mother are gone. Oh no, they. You are an obstruction. Oh, Mr. Planet.
not acceptable. So much gold. Red stuff. Oh my god, this planet sucks. Oh my god. <laughs> He's writing as if. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, fuck it. I don't need any more money, I don't think. Did finish the uh Fuck, are, are they not done? Gotta help them? Yes, Captain. What can the Aurelu Lolly lay? Yeah. Goodbye, clever child.
I totally passed it. I'm at your disposal, Captain. Pretty small amounts, Captain. Bringing those small amounts. Shut the fuck up. The analysis reads as follows. Subject, sunlight. Sun Data, the unit contains a power generator whose output magnitude is simply mind-croggling. When activated, the device radiates energy equivalent to less than one one hundredth of one percent of our sun. However, when placed close to a planet, perhaps in orbit, its output would rival Sol's. Summary, another precursor tool, the energy output of which can replace or augment a sun's radiance. That's the end of our scientist's report. <laughs> we shall await your return, Captain. about the whole uh, Anderson that mystery <clears throat> like I want to go back and talk to Oars about it but synthesis mechanisms with a wealth of radiant energy. What was supposed to take decades has been accomplished in seconds. The process is incomplete, yet we have emerged. We are the truer. Why have you interrupted the process? to have risked so much just to bring us from beneath the shield 
we were not ready, but this is now in the past. What is done is done. You are intent on stopping the Urquan. Very well. We are prepared to assist you in whatever way we can. We must first tell you that even before we were placed under the Slave Shield, we realized that the only way to truly defeat the Urquan was to first destroy their precursor battle platform, the Samatra. This Amatra. vessel was responsible for the victory of the hierarchy over the Alliance. When it was brought to bear against our worlds, we could not resist it. This must be your priority. This must be your eventual goal. We know what is necessary to achieve this end. But first, we must know what you have already learned. So we will scan the data banks and logs aboard your ship. There. The process is complete. Now we can discuss what you must do. You need to locate the Urquan's Samatra vessel. If you cannot find it yourself, ask those others who are near the Urquan. Perhaps they will know. We have detected the presence of a Dnyari aboard your ship. Though the being is darkly evil and incredibly dangerous, the Talo device you possess has effectively nullified the creature's power over you. However, it will do a most excellent job distracting the Urquan long enough for you to approach the Sumatra and destroy it. You possess an antimatter bomb. This is good. But had you activated it, the device would have annihilated your ship <coughs> and everything else within 500 kilometers. Even so, we will have to improve this device, magnify its power with our crystal technology. The destructive potential of this weapon will then make it suitable for the most important task you will ever undertake. The neutralization of the Sumatra, the Urquan's nearly invincible battle platform. You are fully prepared for the undertaking. There is every chance that you will be able to destroy the Sumatra and stop both the Urquan and the Quora. Because your flagship will be substantially weakened by our modifications, you may require additional combat vehicles for protection so that you can approach close enough to the Samatra to detonate the weapon. We will provide you with the designs for our new Avatar class fighting ships. In competent hands, these ships are a match for both the Urquan and Core R vessels. We will now fit the precursor weapon and our own crystal amplification system to your vessel by routing a portion of your flagship's fusion power through the weapon's ignition chamber. Its destructive force will be multiplied by a large factor. The completion date for your vessel's modification is roughly two weeks hence so that you and your human companions may make any necessary preparations at your starbase. We will now transport you and your crew back to Earth immediately. Good luck, Captain. Earth Day. Welcome back, Captain. Before we proceed, I wanted you to know we have made a formal alliance with the Shimmer. Their ships can now be built in our shipyards. Also, in the two weeks that have passed since the Shimmer began to work on your vessel, 
They attach the Utwig bomb to your ship and have also put in place their own crystalline amplification devices to boost dramatically the power of the weapon. This work is now complete and your flagship is ready for whatever final modifications you desire. The Shamer technicians wanted me to explain to you that the bomb and its crystal power boosters are fragile and cannot be moved from their positions at the back of your vehicle. Now I have some bad news and some good news. The Shamur had to remove all your main modules, weapons, crew pods, and the whole lot, including your emergency warp escape unit, so pick your engagements carefully, Captain. In addition, their equipment now fills the rear ten slots, leaving you only six for your own modules. But here's the good news. The Shamur have provided us with an unbelievable wealth of minerals and other resources. We no longer have limits on what we can build for your flagship or your fleet. We're all depending on you. Goodbye, and good luck. Aw, oh, shit. Aw, oh, shit, nigga. Fucking can it. Fucking damn it. I have no fuel tanks. Uh, dude, I can't put anything on this. I should just want to get.
avatar is any good? What are you? Try ring energy. I don't know which one, into the fucking man. Fucking new. on the spot.
I sense the presence of my ancient slaves. It is time, Captain. Okay, now, whatever you do, once I've started, don't leave the star system. We only got one chance at this. Let's make it good. Here I go. Oh. Uh... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nigga, what? Uh, actor? There is something wrong here. Something which makes my sheath retract and my talons ooze. I sense the ugliness of a thousand evil thoughts. And I have located the source of these fetid emanations. They come from aboard your vessel. Foolish renegade human, why have you come here? All that you have found is your inevitable punishment. You may not approach the ancient Sumatra, the symbol of her Quan dominance. Your presence here is further violation of the slave laws, which your species have already violated so flagrantly. We cannot tolerate such insubordination. Your species penalty shall be annihilation. <laughs> oh, motherfucker. Ah! <laughs> Get wrecked. Launch, launch, launch. Launch, fire, die. Yeah. What the? Oh. I don't even know what it does. <laughs> I'm fucked. What does it do? Okay. Oh. I have no battery left. Okay, so... I guess the secondary shoots down projectiles? The tractor. Oh. Board one five six. Beth. Fuck you. Stop crashing into me. <laughs> yeah, I gotta reload. How many is this? Brother. What does this do? No. What's the secondary on this ship, do you know? Wow! A shield? Like the other guys? Punch through. Oh yeah, they're saying they could just punch through close to the... God damn, I'm so bad at this.
Oh, dude! Ah, uh, it stopped behind me. I came back towards. Oh, fuck me. No! <laughs> Baggots. What? Ah, shoot. Go, Fuefo! Your only hope. <laughs> oh shit! Oh my god, okay, don't get in front of his cannons. Fuck, I can't get behind him. Little bitch! I oh, mean, I'm getting totally annihilated here. Uh, what? I thought I had homing, homing stuff on. No. What? Did I not put targeting computer? Oh, I put dynamo things. GG man G Since the press Okay.
Oh, fuck. fuck me, dude. How come he doesn't shoot them? What the fuck? He doesn't shoot them? Don't fight her. Oh, okay, die. I'm out of energy, faggot. What the fuck? Watch the shit.
Oh god, that's not supposed to happen. Happen. Ah! What the hell? Okay, it's certainly not.
Matt. Can't build the fucking function. Uh, Yeah, but it's too sensitive. Oh, 
Also. Shit. 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 Too close. Ah, damn it. Bunch more fighters. I get. Ah, uh, launch fighters. Oh, dude, yeah, but it's fucked up. Firing. I need to shoot. Yes, certainly, Captain. What? Fine. Is there anything else you need? We're all depending on you. Goodbye and good luck. What was that? What was that? I was like sarcasm. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh fuck, bitch! Fuck off!
Yeah. It's a little awkward though, because I'm using A bitch. So minions at back, huh? Where the little bitches at? Much more fighters, faggot. Ah! Damn it! Nah, Fufa. Let's got him. I can't lose work. Take that, bitch.
Greetings, human friends. We know you're about to be attacking the Samantha and probably don't like being interrupted, but we have important news. The rebellion is won. We are victorious. I'm gonna, we I'm gonna restart it. The weep, meep, happy queen and her cronies from the high perch. And better yet, we have found a new queen. A queen who will unite the clans die. in peace and harmony as never before. You will never guess who it is, Captain. A big gunk. Yes, it is true. They survived their absorption into our culture and are now providing us with insight into ourselves we never dreamed of. We only thought we were being happy birds of prey. We were fooling ourselves. Our new queen's name is Breaky Gardira First, and her first <coughs> command was to rush here and bring you these ships, Yeha Terminators and Pakunk Furies. No, Captain, together we can attack the Samatra! Oh. Nope. Nope. Wanna, I don't want a world without Fwifal. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Bitch boy. Oh my god, he fucking I forgot my controls for it. Fuck! I'm gonna restart this one. Fuck! Definitely. That was terrible. Fucking strong. Oh fuck, I wasn't man. Buttons not. That shit's rape. more of those. What the fuck, bitch? Isers? <laughs> I don't want people to die, though.
Oke. Okay. Fuck. Tell me Fifo has to die. No, I don't want. Oh, oh, ah! Bastard. So accurate. I don't like it. Fuck that, so it doesn't get to die. Greetings, human. Yeah. For real? Oh, too bad. Fucking bounce his shit, dude. Oh my, what the fuck?
Tak. This planet. Hell, I couldn't get out of its. This shit again. Got about that. Get out of that. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh. Dude, I turned around way too much. Right back into it. A tutti. Ah, but... Saves the day. <laughs> Greetings, uh, human friends. We know you're about to be attacking us. Hey, let me let me try this again. I'll see. I already. I already have it. I have a save. I have a save already. Oh, there's only one live. I have it saved with FIFO and oh. Uh, like one has Launch, 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 fighters. Oh, dude, fuck me. Bag me, he just bag me, dude.
Why are they so fast? Man. Launch, 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 fighters. But I had it. Oh. As fast as it. Can't outrun him.
Fuck! Have the planet land up. Oh my god. Greetings, human friends. We know you're about to be attacking the Samantha Emperor. Okay, human. You made it past Samantha's guards, and now you can attack the vessel itself. So listen closely. The Sumatra is protected by a thick shell of fused asteroids reinforced with a weak stasis field. You'll never break through that. The only opening through the asteroid shield is covered with a powerful force screen. One touch of that screen, you're history, Captain. To destroy the Sumatra, you'll have to destroy the shield generators embedded in the asteroid shell. To drop the force screen, you'll have to destroy all eight of them. When the screen is down, bring in your flagship, 
move into the asteroid shell, and then press the big red button on your controls. That starts the detonation sequence. Your escape pod will eject automatically. Just hope you're far enough away before that ship blows. Okay, human, this is it. The last battle. Your final moment of triumph. Don't screw up. In case you're wondering, I'm not going with you, Captain. I'm staying on board. Why, you ask? Because I'm locked in here, idiot! Get me out! Help! Help! Oh, I forgot. Beaver, baby, fool, baby, dodo, worm, wit, shark, idiot, stupid, fool, wit, stupid, dodo, wit, shark, worm, wit. Idiot. Quit. Fool. Baby. Dummy. Dodo. Idiot. Loser. Dummy. Oh, Loser. man. Dodo. Idiot. Loser. Fool. Wimp. Moron. Wimp. Fool. 
Dodo, Wimp, Dodo, Moron, Idiot, Fool, oh. Moron, Jerk, Twit, Loser. Ah. Twit, Fool, Wimp, Worm, Stupid, Loser, Wimp, Loser, Jerk, Moron, Dummy, Wimp, Moron, Fool, Wimp, Idiot, Wimp, Moron, Idiot, Wimp, Jerk, Stupid, Baby, Worm, Wimp, Fool, Baby, Twit, Wimp, Baby, Dodo, Jerk, Fool, Dodo, Moron, Wimp, Worm, Dummy, Loser, Dodo, Twit, Idiot, Dummy, Loser, Baby, Stupid, Idiot, Jerk, Dodo, Dummy, Jerk, Fool, Baby, Fool, Loser, Fool, Worm, Dodo, Baby, Loser, Dodo, Jerk, Idiot, Worm, Stupid, Twit, Baby, Moron, Dummy, Twit, Jerk, Twit, Jerk, Idiot, Stupid, fool, stupid, fool, wimp, baby, fool, dummy, moron, jerk, moron, idiot, dummy, loser, stupid, worm, wit, moron, idiot, moron, loser, moron, idiot, stupid, fool, wimp, dummy, ah. fool, worm, moron, jerk, idiot, loser, Idiot, dodo, moron, worm, loser, twit, loser, dodo, idiot, fool, moron, worm, stupid, twit, jerk, dodo, baby, wimp, dodo, twit, stupid, wimp, moron, fool, baby, jerk, dodo, stupid, dummy, fool, baby, dummy, wimp, loser, wimp, stupid, worm, fool, twit, Dodo, Twit, Dummy. <laughs> fool, Idiot, Baby, Stupid, Twit, Moron, Jerk, Twit, Wimp, Twit, Wimp. Dodo, Loser, Worm, Baby, Idiot, Fool, Stupid baby, twit, dodo, idiot, jerk. Moron, twit, wimp, dodo, idiot, twit, loser. Twit, moron, dodo, wimp, fool, loser, fool. Oh my god! <laughs> moron, idiot, dodo, twit, baby, dodo, loser, fool, wimp, fool. Moron, loser, fool, stupid, worm, wimp, moron, idiot, jerk, dodo, baby, moron, jerk, dodo, dummy, loser, baby, dummy, twit, worm, loser, moron, wimp, worm, fool, dummy, dodo, idiot, dodo, worm, idiot, wimp, loser, dodo, Wimp, loser, idiot, loser, idiot, dodo, baby. Wimp, fool, loser, baby, worm, stupid, jerk, worm, baby, twit, loser, worm, baby, loser. Oh man! Loser, moron, fool, dodo, moron, dodo, dummy, oh. wimp, fool, worm, dummy, loser, stupid, moron, wimp, moron, idiot, wimp, dodo, stupid, dummy, twit, stupid, dummy, twit, idiot, fool, dummy, jerk, idiot, baby, dummy, fool, loser, dodo, Twit, stupid, twit, fool, worm, idiot, loser, baby, dodo, jerk, worm, baby, 
stupid, win. Loser, win. Fool, baby, idiot, moron. Loser, dummy, worm, win. Idiot, jerk, loser. Moron, dodo, idiot, jerk, dummy. Moron, fool, jerk, win, loser, jerk, fool, win, baby, moron, win, dodo, fool, baby, dodo, win, dodo, idiot, dodo, moron, dodo, dummy, loser, worm, win, baby, moron, loser, fool, worm, Loser, stupid, jerk, wimp, baby. Fool, twit, idiot. Ah! Hello, you. Oh, fuck. Oh! Alright, alright, Fufu. Oh.
Yeah. I watched the last episode. Uh, oh. I think I was supposed to. I think I, think I need to kill those guys before. Man, hold my fucking hand. Are you getting frustrated at me playing? But fuck. Okay, human. You made it past Sumatra's guards. Now you can attack the vessel itself. So listen closely. The Sumatra is protected by a thick shell of used asteroids, reinforced with a weak stasis field. You'll never break through that. God, I feel insulted. Jerk. Dodo. Moron. Dodo. Baby. Dummy. Win. Oh! 
Allah illu. Idiot, jerk, idiot, stupid, wimp, baby, loser, dummy. Dodo, wimp, fool, dummy, wimp, baby. Oh, dude, what the? Loser, fool, stupid, baby, dodo. Idiot, stupid, idiot, stupid, worm, fool, baby. Dodo, fool, worm, fool, dummy, worm, fool, like. twit. Moron, idiot, twit, stupid, worm, moron, idiot, dodo. Stupid, moron, baby, dummy, baby, wimp, stupid, dummy, loser, dummy, jerk, baby, Fuck. worm, wimp, idiot, loser, wimp. Oh my god, oh my god. Moron, dummy. Moron, dummy, loser, worm, fool, baby, loser, dummy, dodo, moron, twit, twit, dodo, dummy, worm, baby, worm, twit, dummy, Moron, idiot, dodo, baby, twit, jerk, idiot, jerk, dummy, idiot, fool, worm, loser, worm, fool, stupid, dummy, dodo, jerk, dodo, loser, twit, moron, idiot, moron, stupid, jerk, idiot, moron, wimp, stupid, dodo, idiot, Stupid, moron, twit, loser, moron, wimp, worm, idiot, stupid, twit, wimp, loser, wimp, twit, dummy, wimp, jerk, dummy, loser, wimp, moron, worm, idiot, jerk, stupid, worm, jerk, baby, dummy, wimp, wimp, twit, baby, idiot, worm, Loser, wimp. God, moron, dummy, wimp, moron, wimp, baby, moron, dodo, jerk, twit, wimp, moron, fool, dodo, moron, twit, dodo, moron, fool, loser, wimp, fool, idiot, twit, baby. Fuck. Baby, moron. Dodo, dummy, baby, jerk, dodo, dummy. Wimp, wimp, stupid, dodo, moron, jerk. Idiot, dummy, dodo, idiot, worm, loser, wimp, idiot, moron, jerk, wimp, dodo, idiot, worm, dummy, loser, idiot, twit, loser, jerk, loser, fool, worm, idiot, wimp, dummy, idiot, baby, moron, twit, jerk, wimp, stupid, loser, worm, Dummy, dodo, dummy, twit, jerk, baby, loser, wimp, jerk, stupid, wimp, idiot, stupid, dodo, dummy, dodo, stupid, moron, worm, fool, loser, twit, 
Idiot. Dodo. Moron. Dummy. Twist. <laughs> Fool. Idiot. Stupid. Baby. Oh! <laughs> what the fuck was that, dude? Fucking had it, dude. Oh dear, F.O. for real? Dude, he like, oh my god, I just need to go in a straight line. How come I can't kill him? Go down, go down. Both of them? I didn't. I, got, I thought I got one. Battery. Running away from me. Ah, 
<laughs> uh, should I kill?
Hello again, heroic humanoid. Ever since you returned the Ultron to us, everything has been wonderful. Just perfect. Within just two days, our factories will begin churning out appropriate facial appliances. And I have already picked out my first mask. The Domino of Unrivaled Merriment. Yes, we are all ecstatic. Even the High Proctor gambles as she performs the exultant caper of revelation. Look how she leaps with the Ultron held high. How she twists, how she twirls, how she slips and, and tosses the Ultron into the air. Oh no!
Ha, ha, ha. Graphics and controls. And usually, the storyline that draws me. Storyline and everything else is functional. I mean, all you know, gathering, which you upgrade. It's pretty well done. I agree. Play with your three now, and I'll watch you. <laughs> Open world, I get oh, open universe, yeah, okay. Alright, I'm gonna stop. 